Doesn't everyone love Tim Fallon? I love him. I don't know if you do. <laughs> you know what you might love? Me counting down in three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the B&R stream today on this fine 10th? It's the 10th of, of uh, yeah, the 10th of uh, July. There we go. <laughs> What's the date? I've completely forgotten. I've been in a coma for seven days. The stream ends. I close my eyes. It's 8.30 p.m. the next day. I hope you're having a wonderful week and uh, will have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, my week has been uh, like that, basically. I feel like I've done a lot, but then also not much, but then a lot. But I've done some stuff. We can talk about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, nah. Uh, let's, uh, let's hop right into it today. Uh, here we go. Do, 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 do. Dude. I swear, I'm so out of practice. I am so out of practice. I'm like, what are we doing? Um, but yeah, now it's up. More Pokemon. More Pokemon. It's that time of the week. More Pokemon. Um, in the last stream, basically, uh, pushed through Victory Road. We caught the last two Reggies, uh, did some last bit of catch up. And uh, these two people here will go, Only trainers who have collected all the gym badges are permitted to enter. Trainer, let us confirm that you have the best. Okay. Believe in yourself and your Pokemon. Go forth! I'm not letting you go forth. It's a strange secondary tra uh, check, because the original Pokemon game had people tell you that you needed to, you know, you needed to, like, have all the badges and stuff like that, and they check your badges. Here, there's a waterfall in the way. You need the 8th gym badge in order to get through the waterfall. But, oh, okay, you might be like, well, what if you do it a little out of order? Okay, but you need the 7th gym badge in order to dive underneath the water to get to the 8th city. And then somehow also fight Team Aqua, who are underground in the 8th city. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of a party swap because we need to be able to... Uh, surf and uh, fly somewhere, but just once. Um, this is going to be mostly a grinding stream, but there is one thing that I forgot, not forgot, but crossed my mind. I didn't even realize it's like, oh yeah, you can do this. Uh, let's go back to Lily Cove City because um, we need to return an object that technically wasn't ours. So in our bag, uh, and, and fun fact, if you've ever played this game, you might also n not realize this. I'm still holding on to the blue orb, you know, after catching Kyogre and all that stuff, you know, but you don't actually need the blue orb, um, and sort of interestingly, they don't exactly tell you that this is the case, but yeah, no, the blue orb is not actually supposed to be yours, you're supposed to give it back, so <laughs> let's, uh, let's go all the way back and, and give it back, and yeah, it's all the way at the top. All the way at the top after you run through and find everyone again. Oh my goodness. So, uh, if, I'm, if I'm sounding like I'm rubbing my face while I'm saying something, it is because my eyes are mildly tired. Not the rest of my body, just my eyes. Greetings, Blub. How's it going? You've caught me in the, uh, in the middle of uh, the last bit of story that actually happens in the game. Because I, it's the Pokemon League counter story, it's just like something that you do. So, um, uh, so the reason it sounds like you're rubbing your face is because you're rubbing your face. Exactly, exactly, I'm glad you get it. Can you be my doctor? Because my doctor is like, you know, ten, ten different medical conditions. Why yes. You know, you're rubbing your face because you have, uh, like, Armpit hair. I don't know, something like that. Uh, yeah, oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. I, like, I'm not the right level. I'm gonna take a crack at it at the end of the stream. We'll give it a go. But I don't trust myself. I don't think I'm really that good. Uh, but if you head up the top, I actually see it's like, You, so you stopped Kyogre. I shouldn't be surprised. I understand now that humans cannot freely control the balance between the land and the sea. So I've come to return the Red Orb. I doubt that we'll cross paths again. Farewell. That man, he returns to the red orb. Are you gonna return the blue orb to its rightful place? No. What's that? If the balance is the restored, then who's telling what can happen? You will return the blue orb to its rightful place, yes? <laughs> and, uh, yes, okay, sure. Uh, I mean, nothing happens if you don't give it back, really, but. Yes, the two orbs should remain here. It is how it should be for the good of all Hoenn. 
Yeah, like, uh, that's it. That's all you get. You don't even get a reward for doing the honorable thing of giving the orbs back. These old people... I'm not even... I'm, I'm not even gonna hear this old man out. That's how disrespected I am. Um, but, nah. Yeah, you give it back. Exactly, exactly. One of the retro achievements is... You know, giving, giving the orb back, so... Um, pretty much, I don't think there's any lingering retro achievement I even have. So if you're playing through this and you're doing the retro achievement set, uh, let me do a brief, uh, run through of all the achievements that they've got written. Uh, it's not really that long of a list. Um, there are 49 achievements. I have gotten 26 as part of this playthrough already. Uh, oh, retro achievement. I keep plugging this site as this site is great. Uh, go to retroachievements.org. It is a wonderful website um, where basically they run the service and if you play a game on RetroArch or uh, some other supported emulators, um, there'll be a thing in the options where it's like you can put in your RetroArch, sorry, your Retro Achievements credentials and then the emulator will go, will watch the memory of the game and then go, hey, these people have programmed bits where, hey, if the memory is this certain way, oh, you've done this achievement. You know, you, you've done the right things for, for like this kind of unlockable. So basically people are programming milestones and achievements that happen in games. And these can be as trivial as, you know, I'll read out a few of these, but it's like defeat Brendan or May for the first time defeat Brennan or May for the fourth time, like, okay, earn the stone badge, earn the knuckle badge, that kind of stuff. Uh, find the master ball. Very important. Um, catch Registeel without the master ball. Uh, turn off the generator in New Morville and claim your prize, like that kind of stuff. I don't think I've really done anything that's um, too, like, unknown in here. Uh, pretty much the only one that is left to do is, uh, yeah... But it's a cool, it's a cool site because, yeah, you get to show off, like, all the, like, things that you've actually achieved in all these retro games you're playing. Uh, I, notoriously, at the beginning of the year, uh, it has a, it has a miserable Master Ball, and, yeah, they've created a couple of extra achievements of basically catching all the legendaries besides Latias or Latios, um, or uh, specifically Latias, uh, catching all the legendaries without using a Master Ball, so that's why I've been trying to do that. Um, and yeah, yeah, the Master Ball is missable because you can't go back in that base once it's all, once it's all done. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, everything else, it's not missable, but some of them are like, you know, uh, optional. We'll just say. So there's things like, uh, clear all the puzzles of the Trick House, you know, and that, that's something that you know, hey, you can go out and do, um, after the game's done, that is. <laughs> um, uh, some of these are interesting, like, win a prize in the lottery corner, um, there's one for get a time of nine and a half seconds or lower and zero collisions on the cycling course. Um, beat the Pokemon League using a party of six version exclusives without resetting. That is interesting. Um, uh... Play the first 15 notes of Pallet Town using note mats. Castform, are you able to beat this gold bat or is the confusion just getting to you? The confusion's just getting to him. He's, he's gone. He's, he's out of here. Gone. Yeah. So, I, I don't think any of the achievements are particularly that difficult to get. I just realized this what Castform is level 43. Like... I mean, I don't want to, like, over-level, but it's also, like, I don't know why I'm using Confuser. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, I mean, my team is fluctuating around level 40. And, uh, the honest truth is, well, like, yeah, we get to the end of the game. I got level 58 mana gross that I'm gonna have to be up against. I don't even feel confident being, like, less than 50. On 50 seems a bit better, but... You know, less than 50. I don't know. I don't trust my chances with that one. Yeah. I don't... But, like, my problem is I don't think it is spreading out the leveling as much as I ran away from way too many... No, I ran away from too many, um, encounters. That's, like, that's my end problem. Um, it did mean I got through most of the game pretty quick. But it also meant, like, yeah, like... You know, pretty pretty aggressively 
on the level. But yeah, look at the amount of experience points for Pokemon. Uh, particularly, Amaldo did is a slow leveler. That's why he's level 41, but he has so much experience. Um, interestingly, I have not as much at all on Swampert. And Grumpig. Grumpig is bizarrely my lowest experience Pokemon. Interesting. I think, actually, hold on, bonus bonus points. Let's go to, uh, like, can I go to Bulbapedia and, like, uh, what's the Pokemon by, what's the Pokemon by experience group? Is that, is that a thing Bulbapedia has? Uh... Maybe, maybe not. Okay, let, let's just let's just look it up. So, okay, so Mag Cargo. I'm pretty certain Mag Cargo is medium fast, so that's not too bad. Swampert, uh, like most starters, is uh, medium slow, so that's pretty normal. And I'm pretty sure Grumpig is also medium slow. Um, oh, Grumpig is fast. Great, Grumpig will level up super quick, so that's all cool. Um, but then Armaldo. I'm very certain Amaldo is a slow leveler. That just... Oh no, he's erratic! And that means... Isn't erratic, like, actually way worse when you start off? Yeah, erratic is way worse when you start off. Yeah. Yeah. Er Erratic's kind of annoying. Um, it gets better, but it's not good now. Uh, Ninjask is a erratic leveler, so same deal. And cast form is... Come on, Bulbapedia. Loading. Medium fast. Okay, so I actually don't have any slow levelers. I'm just dealing with Erratic. And yeah, the problem with Erratic is that it is as bad as fluctuating and then gradually gets to sort of in the middle in terms of like the amount of experience you need. Um, but technically, Erratic ends up reaching level 100 the quickest. Technically. At a total of 600,000 experience. Uh, but yeah, looking at it, it's like a fast leveler reaches level 50 at 100,000 experience. A erratic leveler, as well as a medium fast, are 125,000. So it will even out by by then. Uh, a, a medium fast leveler will be 117,000, uh, which make it seems faster at first, but it takes a little longer to get to level 100. So, um, and then a slow leveler. Uh, takes, uh, 156,000. So, good, good, good thing I don't have a slow level. I'm also going to turn off battle animations and might as well speed this up a little bit. Um. Because, yeah, I, I, I'm talking and not doing, so. Uh, battle scene for reference, if anyone ever turns that off, it just makes all the, you know, battle... No, no battle... No. I mean, we're just looking at, like, Golbats and stuff. Uh, so let's get, um... Let's get Nonogram out. I'm not a speedrunner. I'm not a speed... Well, like, I'm not a speedrunner, I know, but, like, legit, like... The animations are gonna take up, like, half the time. Like, I'm not a speedrunner, but, like, we are just, like, hitting... You know, dudes from- Wow! I forgot, I forgot he's got whirlwind. That's- that's the joy of having no animations. That- that just happens. It's just the way it is. Well, here's the thing. Do, like, is playing with, um... Uh... With, uh... Like, on Switch mode as opposed to set mode? Is that a fair thing? Or is that, like... Because it's technically on Switch by default. Isn't it? Gosh! See, that's my problem. If Northern Graham's gonna get wrecked by Golbat, what hope is there for the rest of this? People on YouTube can go up and speed the video. Yeah, but I can't speed up the video. <laughs> I'm filming. <laughs> I've got to sit here. I'm not gonna sit here because <laughs> I want to chat. I want to. I want to talk about topics and, and all that stuff, <laughs> but I also don't want to, like, particularly waste time. So if I can do, you know, things to expedite grinding, then that would be so much better. It's 
weird that Wizmas are in this cave, because Wizmas are not good experience. But yeah, uh, leveling, mostly it's going to be based on the wild Pokemon you fight, um, like the, the type of Pokemon they are, they'll have a higher base experience yield. Uh, the level does help, but a level 36 Wizma is nowhere near as good as like a level 20, you know, like Golbat. Maybe not 20. It could be. It actually could be, but yeah. You'd level faster and losing against the league. That is true, but then I'd have no money. But then I could also just spend all my money on things right now. So you're sort of right, actually. Uh, also, what money? <laughs> yeah, and yet you're right, yeah, train it. Maybe not magnitudes, but 50% more. The same Pokemon with the same level will give 50% more experience. So, um, yeah, well, you're right. Might as well. But it is going to be like kind of hurling myself at these trainers and then not using my items between battles. Like, I'm just going to kind of go in there, have a crack at it, and then just any experience I get is cool, but, um... It does mean I would be losing some friendship. I don't think you lose... Uh, let me do a double check on this one. But I'm pretty sure you lose, like, one. Because... There we go. So, friendship... Uh, in gener generation one, generation three. Here we go. So, uh, your friendship is a value between zero and 255. Uh, you gain, um, either plus five, plus three, or plus two, uh, friendship for leveling up, uh, depending on how close they are to the top. Uh, but the big thing is walking 128 steps gives a 50% chance for, um, a Pokemon in your party to gain one friendship. And, uh... That applies to everyone, so that's cool. Um, yeah, fainting. Uh, if the opponent is less than 30 levels higher, you lose one. So I guess that's not really that big, and given that a level up is going to give you two anyways. Um, also, just walking around is probably going to give you one, so you can just wander around and level up. Um, but it does say as well, if your opponent is at least 30 levels higher or outside of battle, you do lose five or ten friendship. Everything else seems pretty... Oh, you actually gain... I oh, actually gain one for going up against an Elite Four member anyways. So it actually doesn't matter in the end, you're right. Well, let's have a crack. Uh... Okay, so here we are against the Elite Four. Uh, might as well go in, we'll see... We'll see how we go. I don't exactly have a strat, or really anything. Um... So, I'm sort of just going in for it. Uh, this guy is... He starts off as Dark-type, so he's gonna have a bunch of, uh... Well, a bunch of dark type Pokemon. We'll start with Riff Raff and we'll just see how we go. Welcome, Challenger! I am Sydney! I was always confused because it's not Sydney, like, the city. It, it's Sydney with an I. I like that look you're giving me! I guess you'll give me a good match! That's good! Looking real good! Alright, you and me! Let's enjoy a good battle that can only be staged here in the good Pokemon League! Also, Elite Four music slaps! They do! They got pre-battle music, they got in-battle music! Yeah, the Intimidate's kind of, kind of sucky though, that's the only catch with <laughs> going up against Wayne. Uh... Now he's gonna be faster than me, this Mayena knows Crunch, Takedown, Sand Attack, and Roar. Uh, but I got Brick Break, that's gonna be super effective, I guess. Um... A little bit on the fence, though, but I, I guess I wouldn't have gone in with Grumpig because Crunch is just going to wreck him. Um, and, it, you know, they're going to spam full restores. That's, that's going to happen. Oh, we're starting to get into this period, aren't we? Well, I mean, you know, we could... Do strat number two, which is just switch to, like, Kipperoni, I guess. Because I, I don't think Kipperoni's really got any other, like, beef in this fight. Oh no, not my Spadef. And being slower as well, so... Yeah, this is, this is my only thing, is that, like, yeah, they get more experience, but, like... 
you gotta be going quick. We've not beaten anyone in like a little bit. Uh, oh, we switch out to Cacturn. Okay, Cacturn here knows Faint Attack, Needle Arm, Cotton Spore, and Leech Speed. That's right, he is Grass type. He is gonna go in with that Grass type. Oh, I told you I was on the level! Like, <laughs> what are we doing? We're either, we're either going up against the Elite Four, or, you know, I'm fighting whatever. Like, Now, you do also have the option of fighting um, uh, the trainers so you can refight. There is that as an option. I'm not saying I've got problems, I'm saying I'm just under level, that's it. Uh, oh, he's withdrawn Cacturn, he's gone straight for Sharpedo. Okay, I've still not defeated anyone yet. Sharpedo, he's got Surf, Crunch, Slash, and Swagger. Two Pokemon, two. You can't. You, it doesn't particularly matter how many Pokemon you level. It sort of does a little bit if like all you, you know, because when you're under leveled and your Pokemon are slower, that is sort of a problem. But in general, you'll sort of reach a point where like, oh, your Pokemon are faster anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Let's go out with Rebox. Woo! Dang it, I forgot. I forgot, I read it out. I was like, oh, Dark type guy, it'll be fine. And then, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm a bit of an idiot. We'll just say that. Um, okay, well, uh, let's get Cast Form in the mix. We're gonna have to go straight in with the Thunder, though. Oh boy, it's got Swagger. Gosh, yeah, this does take its time if you want to, like, fight trainers. I mean, this guy in particular, just because I can't consistently strike him down, and he's way too busy, like, you know, attacking. And doing these, like, big setups. Here we go, finally, one person has been knocked out. It will give quite a good amount of experience, mind you. I'm just curious if it's, like, time effective. <laughs> It's like 900 to, what, three people? Two people? Okay. Uh, he's going back to Mighty Ena. Let's see if I can just, uh, get... Uh... I should be okay with cast form. Like, he's gonna come out, he's gonna, you know, intimidate. Well, uh, let's go with the Ice Beam. Like, I, I don't feel too bad against, like, Sydney here. He seems okay. Like, he's... I mean, yeah, he is stronger than me. But he's not, like... He's not ridiculously stronger than really any of the other, you know, gyms I've fought. He's definitely a bit higher level, but his, his strategy sucks. Like, as much as Dark-type is cool, he doesn't exactly have a... You know, like, a connecting strategy here. He sort of just got, like, other larger Pokemon here going on. Uh, can I take this or no? Oh, darn, yeah. It's probably with Mad Cargo. Too slow right now. Uh, might as well just kick him with Riff Raff. Who is conveniently decked with Aerial Ace. Or I could be slow again. And I flinched. <laughs> okay. Okay, we doing this, are we? Now you're seeing which Pokemon on my team can handle themselves and which ones can't, but... I don't know, in general... Okay, okay. <laughs> Side note, how annoying is it that, um... Uh... There are so many, like... Uh... Might as well just stick in with... Oh, he's got Aerial Ice, doesn't he? Ah, oh, Absol's got Sword Stance, Slash, Aerial Ice, and Snatch. He's got two of my strat, uh, and then, you know, his own thing where he's probably going to use Aerial Ice and wreck me. And that was a crit. He's got a fair bit of health. So, Absol's probably the meanest one on his team, though. Uh, he hasn't exactly set himself up with anything, but 
you know, I'm losing all my Pokemon here, and I've only taken out three of his. Uh, yeah, I'll just keep going with Earthquake since we get the stab. Slash is definitely going to be me because Absol does have a lot of attack, but... Will I take out this Absol? Probably not. It was pretty close though, I will tell you that. And he's got a Citrus Berry, so you know you can't actually beat him. And he's got another full <laughs> I, was, I was thinking, oh, he only has two of them. Or oh, well, one of them before. You know, like, I, I'm getting experience, but I don't know, man. This fight is long. It's, it's sort of lengthy, and someone is definitely dying before, before it's all over. Uh, I'll just run with another thunder. Why not? Uh, doesn't matter. More fun for me, I guess, but... Like, that that is slow. That is really slow to, like, level up when you're just fighting at that level, basically. Um, I don't think it's it's particularly efficient. And and my problem is, like, yeah, I, I feel dramatically underleveled right now. Like, I mean, yeah, we're already, like, 26 minutes into the stream, and it's like, I've had one level up. I mean... I expected that. I, I might have expected I'd beat the first guy at least, but I also was like actively not burning items. That was my that was the main restriction I had then. Dude, they all need like ten levels more. Because like they might need four levels to beat that guy. They'll definitely need ten levels in order to get all the way. Um it definitely can be done. I mean I've had like, when I did, I'll keep saying this, when I did, like, my Pokemon Blue run, I was impressed how low level my team was, but I was able to, to take him out. Um, also, it's 138 because it's split between two people, but, but it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, you can take out a guy and get, you know, a third of the experience in no time. Like, I'd probably just take this raid instead. Also, Harry Armor and, and uh, Golbat will give a lot of experience. Uh, I was able to do very low level uh, Elite 4 and Elite Green. Yeah, it depends on, like, what your team is. And there's obviously, like, there are going to be Pokemon that are just, like... They, there are some Pokemon who are incredibly good. Like, I tried to... I, and I will say, I was telling my... Uh, long, long time mate about this, uh, about this team I had, and he was just like, your team is, like, cooked. And I was like, yeah, I sort of know that, like, I... I did it as a bit of a challenge for myself. I, I was like, hey, you know, like, what is, what are some Pokemon that are a bit unconventional? Um, I guess in hindsight, let's, let's go with a hindsight on that one. He, he was like, first of all, he was like, use a Trico and go with a Skeptile. Um, which is definitely, like, that would have been the thing I'd done, because I like my grass types. I didn't get just as much experience off that gold bet. No, I had two people give me 900 experience, actually, yeah, that was a bit less, but, um... But yeah, uh, yeah, he told me, uh, the thing, I, I did what you did in this playthrough in Crystal a while back, uh, what did I do a while back? <laughs> and it was fine until it wasn't. Oh, like, use, like, a wacky team? Or, like... What exactly do you mean there? So I guess... For re oh, damn, there's another world one. So I guess for reference, uh, like, 125 experience is the... Inevitable level 50 target for all of these Pokemon. That is, yeah, 40,000 experience away, which is potentially wacky team and really and level all six Pokemon equally. Um, yeah, like you can. I mean, the thing with Pokemon is that there's no wrong way of doing it. Um, there's definitely fairly crummy Pokemon. There's definitely crummy Pokemon out there, and I, I definitely think. Not all Pokemon are particularly fun to use. <laughs> like, I wouldn't use 
uh, Roselia on my end team, for example. I, I just feel like, nah, Roselia is just not, not there yet in this game. And, uh, unfortunately, a lot of Pokemon that don't, didn't even run for wild Pokemon. I mean, I used to always, like, run away from wild Pokemon, uh, when I played these games, but I'd also use legendaries. And that, I think, is the, the catch for me. Wasn't necessarily bad Pokemon. Um, but I had, I had a good run in Crystal, I, or in... In gold when I played it, it was just uh I don't think it's the equal level distribution necessarily though, because it the experience is getting to people either way. I guess the problem is like yeah, when you're under leveled, you're slower. You're gonna take a hit, and being able to sweep a team is just kind of more valuable than anything else. I guess maybe that's the the moral of the story. Um, my problem is, uh, like, I guess on my Pokemon Blue run, the, the the Pokemon that carried me the most through the end was Jolteon, I think. Jolteon has the ability to sweep, so maybe that, maybe that actually is the solution to everything. But I feel like every Pokemon except for uh, I had a Dragonair at the end, and unfortunately the Dragonair did not level up in time. Uh, one level 50, some packs could be all, all moist, all Pokemon of the first elite. Also, Pokemon Gold level 50 was, like, above the highest level you'd go up against, right? I know, I only played this game two years ago. But I'm pretty sure it was in the, the if it wasn't in the, the high 40s, it was in the low 50s. Increasing your experience gain. You don't get more total experience. That's that's the gist I was I was getting at. It's your total experience is kept the same, even if you're using uh, experience share all that stuff. Um, all an experience share does is that it halves the experience that comes in and gives half of it to the guy with the experience share. So it pretty much is no different. Like if you know, because I've got an experience share kicking in right now, and then Rebox just gained a level, but like. There's still an overall pool of experience that I'm contributing to. If I want to level up multiple Pokemon to that level, you know, that's fine, but... Technically, you get more experience on the floor below as well. Like, there'll be some slightly higher level Pokemon, as well as, like, parents and stuff. Uh, the final Pokemon of the Champion Silver was level 50. Yeah, bang on 50. Yeah, that's like... But yeah, yeah, I mean, to some degree, I can also say, yeah, like, having one Pokemon that can sweep everything gets you a really long way. Um, well, you have the full Kanto region, but the full Kanto region isn't really any harder. I didn't, I didn't find the Kanto region to be particularly, like, more intensive than the, the League, mostly because... They sort of expect you can do it, at, you know, in any order, and you're going to be up against, um, I think at most, like, level, like, 56, 58. But it's like, you've also got, like, a bunch of trainer Pokemon that could help out. Uh, you could level the other Pokemon faster because you can reliably kill the experienced Pinata that are the weaker Elite Four. That is true. That is true. Is it entertaining, though, to play through a Pokemon game and just keep sweeping it with one Pokemon? Though? But I, I sort of get your point, and it's kind of something where it's like, I'd like to go back and really kind of understand more. Maybe that is the problem, is that I've set myself a challenge, which is I've given myself this team of slightly off-cut Pokemon, except this is very off-cut Pokemon, according to my mates. Um, like, they're like, uh, cast form, excuse me. Listen, I originally written down, uh, Shedinja. Yeah, the Elite Four Pokemon will give you good experience if you can just, like, use a move and they're dead. Um, I have a big problem on my team where, uh, I don't have a Grass-type to exactly, like, sweep through. 
You're taking Mirror's Mine from... Yeah... It's, it's a weird grinding wall. And I'm trying to, like, wrap my head around it a bit more, but yeah, I think you may be right. It's just having, um, more Pokémon to level up, and they sort of speed up the levels. But it's weird how much of the game it works fine in. Could it be because, uh, like, by the time I got my six Pokémon, that was right at the... I don't know, I feel like I was lower in level the whole game. Like, flashback to when I did the second gym in the first stream. <laughs> um, and it was like, I I sort of cheesed that one out because I caught a Sableye. And I just went with that. Um, but yeah, like my other two dudes, they were not really equipped for, for taking out the gym. No, I'm not that super effective. He's got Slash. It's all good. <laughs> it was a crit. It's fine. Um, yeah, maybe maybe you're right. Yeah. Also, don't forget, Nonogram still is lacking a move that's part of his uh, required move pool for what I'm expecting. But yeah, yeah. I guess that's also, like, um... Maybe newer RPG, or not even newer, maybe just other RPGs have ruined my, um, I guess, not ruined, but they, uh, I've forgotten how I originally played Pokemon because of games like Dragon Quest, where it's like, you are encouraged to level up all your party members equally because you're gonna have all your party members, they're all gonna get experience. Like that kind of, you know, reasoning. And then also on top of that, you need all your party members to be gaining experience because otherwise then here comes the boss and you don't really have the desired strategy to take him out, for example. Um, and there's going to be, yeah, there's going to be moments of that. Um, I was also sort of under the impression of like, hey, you know, it's, it's easier to have six Pokemon, you know, with a hundred attack than, like, two Pokemon with 150, you know what I mean? Like, the amount of experience you do need grows, uh, quadratically or, um, maybe it's a cubic curve, I think. I think it actually is a cubic curve. Uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're all cubic, sorry. Um, there's actually Warfare Theory on this stuff, something about lore. For me, it's Murphy's Law. But yeah, you can see, like, the problem with sweeping these gold bats is that I'm slower. And you basically need... You know, you need two things. You need to be able to be faster, and you need to be able to uh, defeat him in one hit. And then it's like, oh look, I'm getting confused by spam, and suddenly it's like, yeah, no, this doesn't work. Yeah, that is interesting that, like, yeah, being slower is not... It's not good. And that's probably why Sedimento also struggled a lot. Maybe that's also, like, another catch, is, uh... Like, people in Pokemon will favor the, uh... Manchester Square War? Maybe, yeah. What's the thing? It's like, you get a... I mean, wait, wait. Yeah, what is it? It's like, if you want to get double the work, you need four times the number of people or something like that. It's not quite the same, though, because it's like... Whoop, okay, with firearms engaging each other directly with aim shooting from distance, they can attack multiple targets and can receive fire from multiple directions. The rate of attrition now depends only on the number of weapons shooting lanterns to determine that the power of such a force is proportional not to the number of units it has, but to the square of the number of units. This is the lanterns to square law. Um, yeah, sort of like that. Sort of like that. I, I mean, it's, it's the impression that having um, you, your base stats of all, or sorry, not your base stats, but like the stats of all your Pokemon total up to a certain amount 
and therefore, like, oh, okay, like, yeah, you know, if I had one Pokemon with 150 attack, I mean, you're only attacking with one at a time, so the one Pokemon with 150 attack is going to be doing more damage quicker, but when the Pokemon with 150 attack dies, let's say you had two of them, it's like, okay, well now you've lost half your team in a fairly quick time, whereas, you know, you could have only lost one-sixth of your team. Um, I guess it does mean you'd be using items more because you wouldn't be relying on items, you know, if your team died super quick. Like, if you're running one Pokemon, who needs revives? No? No? Okay. Alright. I mean, I don't... I, I, it's, it's not quite... You won't get return fire. Well, it, it depends. It depends. Because you need to be able to 100% take out your opponents. I never trusted that one Pokemon would be able to take out your opponents. Um... Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I get that, but yeah, like, it, in, in our case, in Pokemon case, I don't, I don't trust that, you know, I would be able to sweep everything in the game. I think you generally can do a fair bit of sweeping, but I'm not too sure if that would work against the Elite Four. Maybe it does. Maybe, maybe that's my problem. Still slower than these gold pets, though. Does work? I I mean, I I don't want to I don't want to guarantee it works. I definitely know it can work, but does like I don't know if I would say a hundred percent, and I'm what I'm not confident it would have done it on on stream. And then just to go back again. Is it fun watching me sweep everything? Because I, I, I know in first gen, I've done, like, you know, oh, like, here's Charizard, he's constantly using Slash and he beats everything. Because Slash in that game is broken, because all Pokemon with above 64 base speed will always crit moves that high, you know, have a high crit chance. Um, Alakazam! Let, there's, there's your thing again. <laughs> you got a Pokemon that... I can't acquire. I would if I could use if I could use Alakazam, I would be sweeping things ten levels higher. I can guarantee that. I can guarantee that. Um, to some degree as well. I mean I'm sweeping things ten levels higher anyways. Maybe not all the time, but definitely like maybe not sweeping as much. But definitely there's been Pokemon I've taken out, even in this let's play where it's like they're much higher level than me, but you know, you've got all your your Pokemon with all their, uh, you know, effort values given. You've got all that extra stuff. Sapphire Ruby is more two-shotting stuff and attacking first. Yeah, attacking first always helps. I mean, that's, yeah, that's my problem with trying to fight things right now with Armaldo is, uh, is slower. And Ninjask is, uh, weirdly... I, actually, I think I remember, like, one, one problem with my Ninjask, he's got, um... Quiet nature, I think that lowest attack. It's just like the one thing I don't want him to have is lowered attack. Um, yeah, Amaldo is not one of the faster ones. Uh, Grumpig, I guess, is one of the faster ones. Maybe I should be using Grumpig when I'm running around. Maybe that's the case. Maybe that's the problem. Take it off, give it, give it in, and then swap around. Swap her around. Some text, by the way, Swamp Hurt. Ah. Dang it, English names. Yeah, I, I guess the Elite Four is a difficulty spike, though. But it, it's not like, yeah, maybe the problem is all self-inflicted. Like it is just like, 
Yeah, no, like you're using, you know, like tons of Pokemon that are slower, for example. Like I've got uh, two of them on my team. Two slow Pokemon. Two slow Pokemon, three fairly alright Pokemon, and one actual quick one. But the actual quick one seems to not be able to one-hit things, which is... That, like, that's, that's my catch on that one. I do really wish that, like, hey, that actually worked, but... No, it doesn't. I, I don't know why, I can't explain um, why exactly uh, Ninjask is just not able to take things out in one hit. Does it sort of rely on Sword Stance? I guess, but... Does it sort of rely on things being super effective? Perhaps, which I can't do super effective things, but... Yeah. Yeah, oh well. I mean, they'll get there. They'll get there. Oh, Aaron. Ah. So, uh... Oh, and, he's, and he's using Protect. Dang it. Um... Oh, okay. Double protect, sure, sure, game, sure. Uh, so, all right, I got I got one topic of this week. It's not really a, a huge topic, but uh, I guess in the uh, in the midst of I guess two things, I might as well mention one thing. So, uh, good old uh, developer of Nita, uh, what's his name on on GitHub? Zudius, Zedius, Zedius. I'm not too sure how exactly. It might be Zedius, Zedius. I'll go with that. Um, with a bit of community collaboration and stuff, has figured out how to uh, get Nitto working again using a bearer token and all that jazz. Uh, they figured it out, and uh, Nitto is back up. So hooray! Good on that. Um, interestingly, uh, my Tedit instance also hasn't gone down. Like I guess it still works. Maybe the API um, interface through Tedit is not going to work, but Tedit technically works by scraping the web page. So sure. Uh, but it seems that like. For all my, like, gripes about, like, API services getting shut off, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And we should always note that, like, yeah, when... Yeah, that's Harry Armour's 525 experience. It's good stuff. Um, where people are dedicated enough to try and uh, reverse engineer... It's a little bit easier to reverse... Well, it's not even reverse engineering, but, like, to just, like, poke around, try and explore and, and figure things out. Um, you know, they will find a way to do things. I don't think it's nice where well, there's a whip, there's a way. Or maybe. Um, but, uh, like, for... I don't think it's nice for people to have to reverse engineer things that, um, you know, should be fairly straightforward to do. Having to... There's a song? Whip away? Maybe? Maybe. I don't know the song. I'm sorry. Um... But, yeah, like, when it, when it comes to, oh, I want to use the site, and you have an API from the old animated Lord of the Rings, I have not seen the old animated Lord of the Rings. All I know is that Gandalf has, like, got chaotic energy in that. That's all I know. There's a fun fact, I have only ever seen, uh, the Fellowship of the Ring film in theaters as a kid. My dad took me to see it, and I was, like, five. Here we go! Finally, the last move in the- No, I'm not teaching him rest. <laughs> I mean, rest is funny, but, uh... Not for him. And snore? Really? You get both? Interesting. Okay. So the songs? I do like the films with songs, but... Yeah. I've never actually sat and seen The Lord of the Rings. I got a mate, we do a, a weekly movie night. And we're trying to... Yeah, you gotta be on a real bulky one. It's fine and actually really nice on Chansey or Snorlax or something like that. Um, I'm not too sure if it would work on a Shuckle, for example. Where it's like, he doesn't have HP, but he does have defense. Yeah. Gosh, I can't even remember. I didn't run a Shuckle on... My last game, but I 
It crossed my mind. I might have wanted to. I think I swapped them out near the end. Unless I did run them. Maybe. Uh. Yeah. I one day we'll 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 watch uh, the Lord of the Rings films, but uh, until then, um, yeah, it's it's gonna escape my memory. How many times have I promoted Lord of the Rings online, but I've actually not seen a Lord of the Rings film? Um, I even played a uh, Middle Earth, uh, both of them, the the, the Monolith uh, games. Um, first one was fairly alright. The second one. Cleaned up in bits and then sort of awkward in, in how all those, uh, you know, all that army building mechanic near the end of the game worked. Actually, not, sorry, not near the end of the game, because you could do it earlier, but it was unneeded for most of the game. Until the end, when it's like, ah, oh, I don't think it necessarily integrated the best. Um, it's not the worst, but just, I think there's something, I can't explain exactly what, but, yeah, that game... Got its quirks. We're near, nearing the end of a Steam sale as well, so uh, I haven't checked the prices of things, but uh, I have picked up um, everyone's favorite video game, uh, Serious Sam 4. I actually is a is a sneak inside a peek. I really enjoy um, the Serious Sam games, and I would really like to play through at least the ones I've played, which is the first three, which counts both the first two. Um, like, you know, first encounter, second encounter, two, and then three. Um, I would really like to give them a, a, a playthrough on, on my channel at some point. Because, uh, I should really play more shooters as well. If I, I've only played Quake on my channel, um, in, in the stream time. But yeah, no, I'd, I'd love to play through more. Um, I've definitely got some games queued up. I have at least two direct next ones to queue up. Uh, which are, like, me doing old games but better. Um, I'm running out of those on my channel, but trust me, I'm, I'm near the end of that. But these are a couple ones where it's like, I could do them a lot better. You know, let's set the record straight. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I would like to play, play more shooters. Um, the, like... I guess, and, and, and I was thinking this to myself as well, in, in relation to the, uh, to the weekly movie night, uh, with my mate. And, uh, like, we were talking about how, uh, a lot of the films we watch are either cult films or pop culture. So it's, like, either films that people don't really know, but, like, could totally be, like, great films that people talk about. We watched Darkman on Friday, and it was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, but, uh... One of the other things we also have done is uh, we've watched uh, pop culture stuff and I spent through a fair bit of time and we did a post-mortem on uh, the James Bond, Daniel Craig films because, you know, we didn't go out and see the last one. We just, you know, we were like, oh, it's another James Bond film. It's been 15 years. Like, what's up with that? And we never went out and saw it. So then we saw it and then we were like, I, yeah, I remembered why I didn't go out and see it because these are the opinions we had of the other films. Um, we did a similar thing about the uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I never watched any of them uh, when they happened. I feel like um, incredibly, and 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 this is actually remarkable. Um, I just want to add. I think it's next week marks exactly 15 years since I have uploaded the first like me squeaky talking on my YouTube channel. Um, and in 2008, that was also the first Marvel Cinematic Universe whatever film, which was Iron Man. Um, and I guess in, in all, when you retrospect and when you look back at like, here is the trajectory of things, EDF, a nice shooters. I have not played an Earth Defense Force game. I really should though. They, I, uh, they've been floating around my, like, fairly interested in, but yeah, I've not, I've not played them. Um, I got a lot of, like, kind of boomery stuff, uh, I would like to show off, um, but I can definitely give it a go in my spare time, <laughs> like, like, I got, I got a few things. I'm still working through Zelda, I'm nearly done with Zelda, like, we're at, I'm at that point where it's like, I'm trying to now find 
like, things. I know there's things out there, there's definitely a couple of shrines left, but like, when you're at 144, it's like, eh, you start, like, struggling to find the rest. Someone's like, oh, you know, there's 70 bubble frogs left, and, uh, there's 19 wells to go, and, uh, you know, there's, like, some islands in the sky I've not visited, it's just like, you know, it all adds up, you try and figure out what you, what you haven't seen, so, um, I've sort of, I actually, I, I might as well segue in and come back. Um, but I actually played through two PS1 games, which have been on my radar for a bit, but it's like, now I'm getting to them, and then it's like, yeah, this is, like, interesting for me to know about, but not necessarily, like, I don't know if anyone need, needs to do these, needs to play these. So, uh, I played two, and in fact, um... Uh, okay, it's not the last two, but uh, two Traveler's Tales um, PlayStation 1 video games relating to Toy Story, I guess. So, I've played through a bunch of uh, Traveler's Tales games, and I can actually, uh, I can actually look this up as well. Um, but I played through a bunch of Traveler's Tales games, uh, okay, sure. Uh, I played through a bunch of Traveler's Tales games, uh, before. Um, so, I, you know, I famously, <laughs> I will keep saying, I famously <laughs> done the first full playthrough of Toy Story 2 on, uh, on YouTube, uh, which still gets a bajillion views to this day, and I still don't know how. Um, but, uh, I also played A Bug's Life, which was another one of their games that actually came out first on the PlayStation 1. Um, and, uh, they had, uh, they had another game called, uh, Muppet Race Mania. I've given that one a, a go, and I actually, I, I really dig it. Um, but, uh, the two games I played was, I played Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, the Game Boy version. Oh, it's the Game Boy version, is it good? Yeah. Uh, so I played Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, and then I played Toy Story Racer. I think I've played Toy Story Racer before, but, uh, I'll give him a, a clue when we saw the first level. That's how a lot of those games were, it was like, they're not too long, but you wouldn't get past like one or two levels. It would, it would just like kick your butt and then they'd be like, uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, might as well just switch out the Swamp Hut for now. <laughs> Laron isn't too common here, but when he comes up it's like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, there are a lot of games I've played where it's like, man, they probably would have been super tough as a 10 year old, but... Oh, sorry, as a seven-year-old, but yeah, like, <laughs> when I'm older, it's like, yeah, okay, so... Uh, so Buzz Lightyear of Man, I would like to describe this game, because it is tremendous. It is tremendous. Oh, here's Muddy Water. Muddy Water's a hilarious move, because you've clearly learned Surf by this point. Here is an attack that does the same damage. It's got 10 PP, it's got lower accuracy, but it may lower your opponent's accuracy, which means it, it's got a secondary effect compared to Surf. I think in the future games, I think it's physical as well. So that makes it a little more utility, but then also Waterfall exists and, you know, okay. But it's a weird one because it's also got the same animation as a Surf, but it's brown. You're throwing chocolate milk on them, so... Uh, so Buzz Lightyear is Dark Command. Uh, if you only want... Uh, if you only level 3 Pokemon, you will get it before Surf. That is true. That is true. Uh, maybe you're wondering why I keep using Shockwave instead of Psychic, despite the fact that Golbat is poison. Funsies. Um, so Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Uh, it is, uh, effectively, like, I was expecting it to be Toy Story 2, but a little bit more. Um, and in, I guess, against my expectation, it ended up being, um, I'm gonna describe it as Superman 64, it's not that bad, but it is definitely, like, fairly rough around the edges. The game starts out, and you're basically just prompted with, it's the map screen. The map screen, uh, is just a level select in the same way as Toy Story 2. Um, there are 13 levels, plus a 14, actually there's 14 levels, the last level is just a boss fight. Um, and, uh, when you first start the level, you're basically shown a villain. The villain is either from the movie or the TV show. I can't tell you at what point it's the TV show and what point it's the, the movie. And I know it was like a TV movie, so it's not really that fancy, but... 
still. I, I I don't know what what's going on there. Side note, um, how many episodes of that Buzz Lightyear TV show were there? And they all came out in a year. It was a super like dense season where they just like back to back episode episode episode. Um, so there's a lot of Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, but not exactly a lot of like time. It just kind of came and went quick. Uh, anyway, you go into this level, you present with some villain, I forgot his name, uh, and then he's like, you won't catch me, and then he just runs away. You then get to control Buzz through this level. It does control almost like the Toy Story 2 game, except with a catch, which is uh, Buzz can't spin and he can't double jump. And uh, that's, uh, that's something that threw me off ridiculously when I was like trying to get the hang of it. I was like, oh, okay. Um, he can sidestep. I don't think he could sidestep in the Toy Story 2 game. Um, but he shoots this, like, weird, like, kind of projectile. Uh, the gimmick of the game is that you'll buy items throughout the level, and, uh, you'll use those, um, they'll be, like, stronger weapons. So it's like, oh, this is, like, a projectile, uh, that shoots forward. This is, like, a laser or a lightning kind of gun. This is a... Uh, like a rocket launcher or a grenade launcher style weapon, you know, that kind of stuff, and I'm like, that's cool. And if you pick up the same type of weapon again and again, you'll, uh, level it up. So it's like, oh, well, the one that shoots one projectile now shoots two, and then there's some levels later on where it's like, and then it shoots three and four and five, and they actually do expect you to level up those weapons. Unfortunately, not every weapon really has the opportunity to be leveled up a lot, and, uh, by the end of the game, I really only found out with, like, one weapon like what you could actually do with it so um i think there's more opportunity for the game to really explore its mechanics like that um i said buy the weapons and that's just because as you go through the levels you will be picking up coins or as they called like universal currency or something like that i don't know um but it's it's just like as you go through the level you're getting this currency and then you will spend it on stuff now uh, also, the levels will have green aliens. You just gotta be able to pick up all of them. Um, and, uh, by the end of the level... This is the kind of weird thing. You'll get medals at the end. You need so many medals in order to continue on with the game. Similar to Toy Story 2. But the medals, you get one medal for beating the boss, which you have to do in order to even continue. You then get half a medal for finishing the level with so much money left over, and another half a medal for, uh, collecting all the aliens. When I first ended the first level, I had one and a half medals. I was very confused. I'm like, what, uh, half a medal, what does that mean? Um, but no, it's just the medal reward, the, the optional rewards are all half medals. It's confusing. Um, uh, now, the part that I sort of say it's Superman 64 is that the actual level is very, very linear. The first level you go in, it is like, this is just a straight path. You have the narrowest, like, walkways, but you've just got fences surrounding you. So it's like, you've got this wider scenery that you can see, but you can't go anywhere. You're stuck on this, like, very tight path, and it's like, oh, okay. Then it sort of opens up into a, you know, a battle area, but like, oh, I'm just gonna walk past all these enemies and stuff like that. You're just walking through buildings, uh, that slightly show up in your way, you might pick up some items, you'll collect the aliens, and, uh, yeah, it sort of just happens. Some of the later levels get a bit better at it. I actually, I did dig the, uh, there was a volcano level directly after that one, and, uh, you get a bit more going on. You get some alternating, um, some branching paths that will eventually converge, more hills, uh, a bit more going on. There's never really platforming. It never gets to that level. Um, I, I don't recall. There is one singular underwater level, and uh, you can freely choose to go up and down. Um, and there's a couple of levels that emphasize driving a bit more. Uh, so sometimes you'll spend the money on buying like a vehicle. It's like a little hover bike or a skateboard or a jetpack. Um, I'll allow you to sort of traverse the same level, but a little bit faster and, you know, sure, okay. Um, the enemies are really just bullet sponges, but sometimes some enemy types drop a lot of ex uh, money. Sorry, not experience. They drop a lot of money, sometimes they don't. You're sort of relying on this balance of like, okay, well, is it worth fighting the enemies and taking hits? Or is it worth, uh, 
you know, just continuing on. That is until you then realize, I, I mentioned, when you start the level, you have the boss show up and then he starts to wander away. As the boss wanders away, he starts planting bombs through the level. Every time the bomb appears, you have 40 seconds to destroy it. He is just racing your way through the level, and he's just putting these bombs as checkpoints to make sure that you're not taking too long getting through the level. Um, and then when he gets to the end of the level, there's a counter at the top of the screen. 15, 14, 13. You have 15 seconds to make sure you have caught up with this boss. And then once you get there, then you fight the, the boss. The bosses are a bit weird. Um, they're, uh, they all have shields, and the shields require um, you hit them with certain weapons. Now, there's not too many weapon types. Uh, usually I've just found it's like either they ask for an orange or a purple or a green weapon. You start off with a green weapon, no sweat there. Um, and usually when you get to the boss, they have an item near them that you still have to pay for. So if you really don't have any money, you're screwed. But at least there's usually an item near them you can buy in order to, to shoot them. You break their shields with different colors, and then eventually you can just fight them, you know, with any weapon just for the last stage. Uh, all the while, they're kind of just fighting like any other Toy Story 2 boss. They chill around and awkwardly fire things at you, and then it becomes kind of chaotic, like trying to dodge things. But the good news is uh, to combat your health... Sorry, com to combat how spammy everything is, you have so many hits. You can take like 20 hits before you die. You take a ridiculous amount. It will happen. You're going to be going so aggressively through this game that you're going to die. Um, it's just going to happen. Uh, and it's because uh, if you... There are some levels with bombless pits. If you fall from any of them, you die. If you run out of time with a bomb or at the end of the level, you die. And dying, there are no lives. Unlike Toy Story 2, where there are lives, there are no lives in this game. You die, you go back to the main menu, and continue, well, try that level again. So it's not like a, a full game over, but it is like, you're timed in every level to to beat the level. Like, you are, you're, you know, they've set the clock, you gotta go. You can't wait, you can't look at anything, you can't really fight the enemies. Um, I think the second last level in the game is sort of a horde level. Hi Mr. Crip, how are you doing? Uh, the second last level is a sort of a, a, an arena fight level where it's like they actually close doors on you and don't open them until uh, you fight all the enemies. But again, the guy is flying through the level and then planting bombs ahead of you. You are expected to kind of rush your way through the level. It's not too difficult. Like I'd definitely say once you might take a couple of goes at some of the levels, but generally none of it is like deeply that difficult. Uh, I am preparing to fight the Elite Four. The goal is-ish to get all the Pokemon up to level 50. Um, Rebox is 45. I also have an experience share on um, on a uh, Amaldo, uh, who is uh, also, I think, level 45. Um, but I also have Sedimentar Kipperoni, who are struggling back. Um, the main thing that I sort of noticed is uh, none of my Pokemon are actually slow levelers. And that's a plus because it means that um, most of them will get... I, I read out what um, experience types they are. They're all either erratic fast or medium fast. Uh, I think in Swampert's case it's medium slow, but like by level 50, the medium slow is still a faster leveler. So really the erratic ones and the medium fast are going to take 125,000 experience to fully level. Um, and given that, you know, Amato is 103,000, and how much was Grumpick? Grumpick's a fast level, so he doesn't have to get up that high. He, he, can, he can get there by, I think, 100,000, so... So, uh, we're getting there, we're getting there. It might still take a fair bit more Pokemon, and then, of course, I've only leveled two of them. Uh, this team, yes, this team is, uh, a bit cooked. That is the... <laughs> The challenge I had set myself to get through this game, um, I still think it's a it's a fun team. There's something nice about going on, but I definitely like I've aged 
I'll just say that, like, I used to know way more stuff off the top of my head. I used to know, like, type effectiveness so much more than I do now. I keep accidentally sending Pokemon out that are just like, nope, that's not, that's not the right type, bro. And it just keeps happening. Um, there, are, there are still some tribal knowledge I will never forget about Pokemon. And uh, honestly, I still know a lot about um, going around, like, first, second, and third gens. Like, I... I can't think, like, if, if either of you can can remember anything that I haven't done in this game, exactly. Like, I feel like there is nothing left to show. We, we have seen everything going on in this game, pretty much. But yeah, it's like, I don't know, you got like 400 experience from that. Or well, that Laron gave 900 experience total. So if you're trying to level 6 Pokemon up to level 125, oh sorry, to 125,000 experience, you know, you've got 750,000 experience you gotta do. If one guy gives you 400, or gives you 900, it's like, hey, that's more than 0.1%. Which sounds really low, but, you know, you've already got a lot of experience going into this, and, uh... Probably a little less experience. I don't think I actually need that much. Might be closer to, like, 700,000. Uh, any other Nintendo game series after Sapphire? Um, on my radar, actually, not really. Like, I, I mentioned I had a lot of other, like, games I would love to play, but, like, surprisingly, not a lot of them are Nintendo games. I do intend to give Metroid Prime 2 a go. That was something I really wanted to do on my channel ages ago, and then I never got back around to it. Um, so I'd like to give that one a go again. Um, I also don't want to rule out, um, another Zelda, maybe, uh, or anything else, actually. I, there may be some, some more secret-y kinds of games, um, lesser known ones I'd love to give a go. Yeah, that, that might, that hairy armor just, you know, a thousand experience right there. So, and I've got to attack animations off, because, you know, it gets there, it's a bit quicker. One day he started to stream PS1 games and stack for this the whole year. It's my catch though, is that, is that Pokemon is a long game. I will play one Pokemon and then it's like, okay, this is stream 10 uh, of Pokemon already. Um, and I, I think I did 15 streams for Pokemon Gold. It's like, that. that is a quarter of the year on just the one game. Uh, I think it's fine, and I, if I play more Dragon Quests, eventually they're gonna take that long. Riff Raff is trying to learn Fury Cutter! That was one of the moves I had originally wanted to teach him, and then I was like, nah, nah, I'm good. We do the new Mario game in October. Um, oh, uh, Mario, uh, Mario Brothers Wonder. Um, I, I, I generally don't play brand new games on this channel, but I won't rule out any other Mario games. Like, even, like, 3D World, even New Super Mario Brothers. I, I have watched the trailer. The trailer looks pretty alright. Like, I can't, like, I'm, I'm not gonna, like, oversell it, but I also won't undersell it. I can't, I, I'm not gonna say it's a bad game. I think, you know, Nintendo's figured them out. You know, I got to cry asleep for a whole year after I woke up a few weeks ago. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um... Yeah, it looks fine. It looks fine. I... The talking... Like, the actual voice acting, I'm like, ooh, okay. Uh, especially after playing Zelda, where the voice acting is a bit shocking. Game's getting perfect scores, but bro, if I've got one thing I can point out, it's, it's that voice acting. Um... But yeah, when it comes to, uh... Doing, um, yeah, doing a new Mario game. I definitely have a desire to play another Mario game. But, like, I won't tell you it's a quick... Sorry, it, it's not It's not soon on the radar. Mario Elephant. It was so quick at the end, everyone notes that. And I'm like, there's been, like, other silly Mario, like, you know, things. I'm not, go I'm not gonna point out the elephant and say, Oh, how dare he. Was that three protects in a row? I guess the first one didn't count because I switched out. Um, I've played Sunshine. I have played Sunshine. I played it much more recently than any of the other ones. 
Uh, have you ever heard about Dendi? Isn't Dendi like, I keep thinking Dendi is a calculator, but I know that this is like a, it's like a, a console, the Dendi, isn't it? Um, I have played Mario Sunshine, I played it, um, either two or three years ago for the last time, and then I think I played it, like, five or six years ago for the first time. So, like, fairly recently, after, you know, Galaxy 2, and actually kind of after I stopped doing my original Let's Plays, um, but definitely, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Dendi, Chinese NES clone. Which all post-Soviet Union play, this is why some Russians still call consoles dandy. It's interesting that, like, the original consoles all got called kind of the same things, like, users would call... I, I found out as well, the Atari 2600 was never called the Atari 2600 until 1982. It was the Atari Virtual... Uh, virtual... Sorry, visual... Visual console system? Video console... Video console is probably the one. The Atari VCS. Um, and that was its name, and people would call it the Atari. It's the, it's the only thing from Atari you own, it's the Atari. That's how it works. It's like, you know, like cars, it's like, I was saying I'm driving a Ford Model T. You're driving a Ford Model T, you're probably driving that one. And then I had to pay their ads on, uh, to play their ads on Dendi TV channels just to sell the SNES for 200,000 rubles. Because I guess they sold it directly, didn't they? And it's a tough gig trying to, like, sell the next device. So I think Nintendo, uh, got there in the end. It's interesting that, like, Sega was doing it quite a while, because they already had the, um, not only the, the Master System, but they had, um, uh, I forgot the name of the system before, but, the, like, there was a Sega system before the Master System, and, uh, I mean, they got to sell, sell the Mega Drive or the Genesis, they sold that fairly alright, but then when Nintendo gets around to calling, you know, Super Nintendo, suddenly it's like, oh, no, how could you do that? We even already had the Odyssey 2 and the Atari 5200 and the 7800, I think, was out by then. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, no, Atari didn't call it the 2600 until, um, later, when they basically were trying to sell the 5200. It was always internally called the 2600, so that name is not like we pulled it out of thin air. Nintendo tried to sell their console in Russia for pirates who pirated their own console. A pirate... Was the Dendi, like, a stolen piece of hardware? Like, as in they, they basically found the way to produce NESs and just sold it themselves? Or was it, like, a proper licensed system? You know, like, um... I'm trying to think... Uh, like the IQ player, for example. Like it was stolen? Alright. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if anyone recalls the IQ player, which is a, um, a GameCube that's actually a DVD player, because, uh, that's what they did in, uh, I don't know, that's what they wanted to try. Actually, could it play DVD? I, I feel it was like it had two sections. But since it was a different console, technically, uh, the format of the discs was different. But they are effectively the same discs. It may be, um... Other examples as well. I'll probably remember some. So, uh, so to circle back, uh, <laughs> let me let me go uh, just finish up with the Buzz Lightyear's talk and uh, rant or whatever. Um, but basically, every level eventually just played the same. You would always rush through the level uh, and then you know try and pick up the aliens, try and pick up some money and call it a day. The money was not really that much of a push, and since the levels are fairly straightforward, it's very hard but not impossible to miss some aliens. Um, renamed it to Dendi and had the elephant mascot. Elephants make great mascots. There's a lot of, there's a lot of great, like, elephant logos, you know? Um... But yeah, yeah, uh, the, the, the biggest problem I found going on when our Nintendo show this Mario. Oh, is, it, is that confusing people? I don't know, I like, I like the, 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 the elephant Mario. They've had like weird Marios before, I'm trying to recall like another really weird one. There's, there's been weird ones, I'll, I'll just say that. Uh, can I say T-Rex Mario? Like, we were... <laughs> I've, I've been through this feeling before. It's like, oh... Hotel Mario... Oh. 
Wait, so the princess to, uh, uh... <laughs> forgot the line. <laughs> Drop us in on a picnic, gay eh, Luigi? <laughs> it's, it's that, yeah. Hotel Mario is a classic. Maybe one day, I've never actually played any CDI game. There was a lot of- there were a lot of CDI games. Like, I've, I've played Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. I- there- there are so many other games I'm glad I eventually played. Sorry, Link. I can't give credit. Come back when you're a little mm, richer. Classic. So good. I keep, uh, citing, uh... Uh, onto the pit it burns. That's so good. I I love as well the fact that like Zelda CDI was very internet famous well before the idea of like random YouTubers like finding an older game and then like making fun of it and suddenly everyone's that that's their opinion. Uh, Sub Sphere, how's it going? I'm doing fairly well. We're, uh, we're currently just in Grind City. I haven't really done anything other than I gave back a blue ball to an old man or an old woman um, in this game, but uh, it's been a good stream so far. I do stream regularly. I stream every day at... Uh, every day? Every week! I'm not streaming every day. That'd be, that'd be impressive. Uh, but just every week, Monday, 8.30pm, Australian Eastern... Uh, just the time, so when it's daylight, it's still 8.30, but, you know. Uh, if you say, can I help you with some stuff? Ooh, you can help me with some stuff. If you say, uh, the, the chat is very hard to read, yes, I need to sort of address that. Uh, I don't know if I should be proud of this shit post level games or Spanish shame for the Mario, uh, devs. Actually, I'm making logo banners or sub banners, overly emotes or animation for streamers. That's cool. I don't know if I can do emotes, because I'm not a affiliate or partner. Um, On-screen banners, uh, I like having my little watermark. I I'm trying to figure out, like, I would like... So if you say, can I show you some samples of my work? Yeah, you can show it. Yeah, Twitter, um, Fetty, you know, you, you can show me stuff. It's all good. You do DMs in YouTube, I think. No. No, they got rid of YouTube DMs, didn't they? Yeah, what a shame. Can you do DMs in Twitch? Maybe you can. But yeah, no, try it. It's all good. Uh, yeah, I really, I, I don't know off the top of my head, like, where exactly I would like. The old Twi Twitch DMs are gone. It's so, it's so weird that all these sites remove private messaging as a feature. You can only whisper. It's it just seems like such a needed feature. Like why? If you're like complain, oh people, you know, people called call out of nowhere. Uh Sophia Jack07, this is my Twitter. Is the 07 your age or your birth year? That's not actually that like I mean you'd be 16 now. Or 15. Or you're just the seventh Sophia Jack. But your Twitch says 08! What's going on there? <laughs> uh, because people weren't using it because it was super hidden. That that's that's a uh, you know, I, I I have been at I have been in companies where that was the case. They moved a feature, then they saw no one used it, and they used it as justification to not support it anymore. That's a VJ07. Yes. Um, and 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 it's like externally, I I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing, company. Stop. Please. Be- be honest. Just say, we don't want people using this feature anymore. Call it there. Don't just tuck it away and suddenly I'm now confused. I'm a confused user with your product. That's what they do to me. Um, I still have an export file on my old Twitch DMs. Uh, if you need any stuff, so DM me. Yeah, I can give you stuff a look. Um, I've sort of had ideas in my head of like, actually animating my own, like, transitions. Um, I have had, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm very stubborn and I've usually just been like, oh, I'll just do it myself, and then it looks like trash. If anyone, uh, recalls, there's a video on my channel. It's not even that old, but there's a, um, I did a, like, because this was back when I was trying to experiment with, like, not just doing Let's Plays and stuff like that. Uh, I saw the follow on OBS. Where's the animation? Where's the... Bloop, bloop, bloop. It didn't even show up. 
Sophia, thanks for the follow. It just showed up. I see it. I see it. It's cool. Um, yeah, I don't know where the overlay is. I don't know where it went. The tr maybe the trick is I gotta program it myself. Um, but yeah, if anyone recalls, uh, back when I was trying out different -y things on my channel, uh, I, I did a review of Pokemon Troze, because I was like, well, I like this game, but I don't exactly want to let's play it, because it's just a bit of a, like, it just happens puzzle game. And there's a bit of luck involved, there's a lot of luck involved with that game. But I did a review, and I wanted to, like, you know, talk about it. I can't tell you at all what was in that review. I really don't remember any of it, but I remember near the end, or I didn't remember two things. Uh, first of all, at the beginning, I did a, um, uh... A, um, classic game room, like, sort of, parody is to put it lightly, it, it's a bit more of a blatant, like, ah, here's my, like, nod to that, which is cool. Uh, and then I was like, I need a proper intro that's not stealing from someone else, and then I had, like, a terrible animation, it was just I imported the Munchlax sprite into Blender and then I moved the camera around it and it didn't, it looks so unimpressive, but then I said it was impressive. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> there's probably a bunch of stuff like that. Also shout out at the end of the, at the end of the video when it's like, oh, I had, um, I, I gave this, this game a one thumb up and I was like, what do I do? And I like, took a picture of my hand and I like, <laughs> colored it blue. <laughs> I just called it a day. <laughs> I was like, it's so low effort. It's so, so bad. Like, I don't know what, what standard I have. No one called me up on it. No one said, like, any of my stuff is, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe no one saw it, but trust me, you go on my channel, you'll see that, and it's like, oh, it is, uh, like, ambitious? I don't know. I, I had an idea in my head. And then I was like, oh, like, how do I do other reviews and stuff like that? That was around the period when I also went, like, the things I say on the internet, like, they're not really fact. They're just opinion. But you can't say opinions on the internet. You gotta, you gotta call them facts or make video essays or that kind of stuff. And then it's like, uh, at the end of the day, no, like, a lot of people were saying stuff about video games. Uh, you know, they don't necessarily line up with you. Or they... You know, it may not even be true. Like, I've got opinions about, like, how I feel like certain mechanics fit together. I really enjoy, um, you know, like, I, I made that video on Cook, Serve, Delicious and all that, and it's like, yeah, like, you know, I like the way the game mechanically works in that way. And I, I still feel those opinions are, are right. But yeah, just the format of, like, calling them, like, video essays and all that stuff, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not necessarily, like, I don't know if they're actually legit. I made it up and I hope that it was real. Or rather, I hope that, like, that was what their intention was. I don't like the idea of, like, coming up with, like, this is a genius idea and it's like, you're the only one who thought of that. Like, it does make sense, but I don't know. You know, like, uh, like you do English essays in, like, high school and stuff and it's like, I don't believe the stuff I'm putting down on paper necessarily, but uh, the teachers love it, so... I don't know, I call it a day. So, uh, but anyway, to cycle back, um, yeah, I, I would like to, to do my own transitions of things. I feel more confident in, like, quality assuring my own stuff. Like, if I don't have it ready, I just don't put it in the stream, and then eventually I'll get it done, or stuff like that, but it's not really a high priority, and it's just kind of something I'll do on the side. Um, I've never animated anything before. I've drawn stuff. I don't use any of it in my streams. Um, but, uh, the, the key, the key thing I wanted to say is, like, you know, the, the intermission and the stream starting and the stream ending, like, all I did for that is I went to After Effects, I took some text, I extruded it out, and then I waved it around with a sign formula. Um, and then, it, uh, at least the, the intro and the out, the intermission, it's just a 30 second loop. So, it doesn't, doesn't even need to be 30 seconds. I think it legitimately could be less. Um, but, 
Uh, yeah, I'd like to do something a bit more fancy. A lot of, a lot of, you know, Twitch streamers um, have fancier things. Um, maybe they have a nice little animation that's a bit more personable. I feel like for me, that's... There are things that I can do to grow my channel, and also just fun things. Uh, so, yeah. I got, I got ideas, I got ideas for that, so. Anyway, Buzz Lightyear game, I keep forgetting to, to finish it. Um, so, the game sort of continues on until you go, Huh, I can't continue this next level because I need the medals. You then go back and you start to, you know, 100% the, the levels, and then eventually, you still don't have enough medals, because as I said, you'll only get two medals total, because you get one medal for beating the stage, and a half medal for doing the two other objectives. Yeah, there's no other objectives. Instead, as you pick the level, you have the ability to pick time trial mode and then XR mission mode. The time trial mode is you start the level and you walk right up to where the boss was, except you don't actually see the boss, in the time limit. And if you do it faster than a part time, you get uh, an extra half medal. So that's one and a half medals up for grab right there. It is sort of a, it's not actually that hard, but like you might find it's very close to get to the end if you don't grab any of the like speeder bikes or the, or the, the skateboard or stuff like that, which is where all that stuff comes in. And so you're like, okay, I start off the level by picking up a bit of money. You jump on the board, which is always there at the beginning. And then it's just trying to run into batteries and things along the way to keep it stopped. It's not exactly that difficult. In fact, I actually found it usually easier than the actual level. Except at the end of the game when you had to do the, the you know, the, the horde room kinds of that one level. And suddenly there is no speed of bike. You're just finding your way through enemies and hoping for the best. Uh, and then the uh, XR missions. Sup, Taco? How's it going? Uh, the Tactic Taco. The Taco with the Tactics. He's got the strategy. And, uh... The lettuce? There's lettuce in tacos. <laughs> like, out of all the things in, in tacos, lettuce. That's the one. Um... So you get to the, uh... To the XR missions, and you won't believe it! You're timed. You go to the level, you pick up all the XR pieces, and then you just walk up to where XR is usually close to the end of the level, but he's he's before the end of the level. So all, and that's it. Again, one and a half. Beat the, beat the level, you get a medal. Beat it in a part-time, you get another half medal. That's five medals total. This is nostalgia. Me grinding some levels for Pokemon, uh, or also uh, talking about uh, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command on the PlayStation 1, a game that I played and pretty much beat. Uh, all last week. That's what I'm just chatting about on stream. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, all three challenges that you actually have to do for the levels are all timed. And they're all just going through the same level again and again. And then it just depends on like how sort of well you do it. If you just want to normally go through the levels and not really do any side objectives, I think maybe you'll have enough, uh, you know, medals in order to beat the game. But I decided 100% the game. <laughs> it wasn't that bad actually, but I called it Superman 64 because you started to get into this weird like bit where near the end of the game, the levels were a bit dog. There was a lot of just enemy spam. Lots of projectiles all over the place. And the only thing that sort of balanced it out was that you had so much health. You could run through so much of the game until you needed some money and then it's like, okay, well I'll just find the more convenient places in the level to get money. Oh, bonus points! The boss drops money as you hit him, and the bosses take way too much damage. So, there's so much opportunity to just grab his money and, and leave. Oh snap, <laughs> I've been using Psychic a bit too much. Uh... Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, we're good. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> um... Just curious, is this ROM, uh, uh, Game Boy type? Uh, no, this is an emulator, this is... I'm using RetroArch, I, I'm not, uh... If I was playing on an actual Game Boy Advance, that'd be very impressive. Some people do play on a Game Boy Player, on, a, on the GameCube, and I guess that's the legitimate way you want to play 
Game Boy Advance games on your computer, or rather, just stream it with a direct video feed. The problem with that, though, is that there's no, like, digital output for a GameCube. You'd have to mod it, or do an analog-to-video uh, converter, like a retro tink or something. So it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work if you want a good signal um, for a Game Boy Advance game. And uh, emulators are simultaneously convenient and very good at what they do, so... And technically, the emulator itself is perfectly fine, no matter, <laughs> like, when some people say, oh, it's piracy, it's illegal. No, the emulator is mostly fine, as long as it doesn't use underlying code, which, uh... There's a very small subset of emulators that do indeed reach onto that, so... Moral of the story is the Buzz Lightyear of Star Command game is, uh... It feels weirdly unfinished. It's, uh, oh, it's got weird FMV, FMV sequences that just don't line up with anything. Um, the levels don't really tie into anything in particular. You just, at the end of the game, you're gonna fight Zerg, and then you win. And then the game is just over. Uh, you don't really get a reward for getting all the collectibles. You get a slightly longer ending video, which isn't really meaningful, because it's just taken from the show or movie. I can't tell you which one it was. Um, the moral of the story is, uh, this one's a bit of a skip. I don't know, I wouldn't go out of my way to play it. It's not a fun play. It reminds me too much of Superman 64 in a sense of how weirdly lin linear, weirdly unplay-tested the sort of cartoon cell shade look, but it's a bit too early for that to, to be good. It is not really buggy, but I did have, um, a couple of moments, and this may be an emulator thing, so I might want to grain of salt, but I did have a couple of moments when the game just froze, and then it started playing a minute later, except one time it did not play. The audio was still playing, so it's not like my emulator just crashed, it was like, oh, it's perfectly emulating the audio going on. But, uh, no, the, the game itself was just dead. Very odd. Uh, the hit, hit detection here and there, the ice level, I can, you know, forget about, please. I'm trying to get the retroact to work, but, uh, Techy enough, sadly. The only game I was able to get up and running so far uh, was Pokemon Infinite Fusion, but I want to get Silver and Emerald version up on stream soon, once I find a good place to find ROMs. Uh, I will... Uh, that's all good. L legally, legally, I, you know... Uh, <laughs> you're not supposed to point people towards any ROM sites, so I, I would definitely say that... Uh, Google and Reddit are sites that exist already, and if there just so happen to be a ROM subreddit, maybe ROMs, and they just so happen to have a mega thread which links to archive.org or some other guy's website that just so happens to contain a lot of these, you know. Hypothetically, if there was a lot of that stuff, but, uh, but yeah, uh, for, for general, like, verification, if you look for, um, like, there's a site called No Intro, uh, and they do a lot of ROM cataloging, so they take the, the, um, the contents of the game, hash it into a string, so it's like, oh, you, if, if you had an identical copy of the game, and you hash it in the same way, and you get the same string, um, yeah, yeah, give, give Reddit a check. Um, so, yeah, yeah. But yeah, if you, if you look for no intro ROM set or no intro verified ROM, you're bound to be looking in the right place. And you don't have to, you know, you don't even have to deal with, like, ads on any of these sites. Because it's like... I don't, I don't know, a lot of people make money out of running ROM websites, and I know, like, they get a lot of attention and, and traffic, and you generally want to pay for your hosting, yes, but also, at the end of the day, you, you, you know you're hosting ROMs, like, <laughs> like, I don't know how anyone can, like, justify, like, not having a bit of heat on them for that, so. But, uh, yeah, no, nah, like, I mean, I've never had anyone personally... <laughs> How do I- how do I say this? Like, there's so many people who download things off the internet, it's very hard for, like, individuals to exactly get, like, called out on it, but, yeah. Um, uh, I don't think you need a BIOS file 
for the Game Boy Advance emulators, so you should be okay. But if you do, uh, look for that as well. It may be close to... Actually, if you're looking on Reddit, then... Uh, I don't... Uh, though everyone likes the nostalgia... Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I, I say this as a, like, a carefulness, because I know of some people um, who... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't need a BIOS, then that's all cool. I still, I still enjoy just like, hey, you got the BIOS there, and then there you got all that uh, low-level emulation going on. Um, I don't think it really matters for the Game Boy Advance, but uh, if you're playing like PlayStation One, it is important. It is needed. Um, if you're playing like, what is it, PPSSPP, they've implemented their own BIOS, so it functionally works, but it's technically the emulator substituting itself in when it needs to, rather than the actual original system, so... Um, yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, though, like, I, I really do enjoy playing older games, and I do wish that this preservation was a lot easier, um, or, a, or a lot more uh, standardized, a lot more legalized, because, like, this game... PPS, this PPS is nice. It is nice, yeah. Because there's, there's a lot of, like, older games. Like, there's Buzz... Actually, Buzz Lightyear for Stockman, it's on the PS3, I think. Um, but there's a lot of older games that are just, like... You know, they're, they're not available. You can't play them. And, uh... Like... They don't sell it. They don't, like... Yeah. Thanks for the follow. Tactica. Yeah, what... <laughs> Where did Sophia Jack show up? Did Sophia Jack is not on this list. Did Sophia Jack subscribe or follow 17 minutes ago? I don't know. Um, yeah, no, legit, people will pay money for, for old stuff. Um, it is trickier. Yes, they released Pikmin 1 and 2 on Switch, so yeah, the whole thing's on the Switch. Um, I am a sucker who bought Xenoblade Chronicles 1 again. But I'm also like, I buy these games if I want to play them and I want to enjoy them. The moment I cannot buy that game, you know, like, to some degree, it doesn't matter what at all I do if there is no actual way to purchase that game. This isn't like a... Oh, okay. Real talk. Real talk. I'm gonna... Mild tangent. Uh, I didn't realize until today that you cannot buy Formula One 2020 one on Steam or anywhere anymore. I definitely play enough, uh, play enough pretty pennies for nostalgic. Yeah. But, like, you can't play the Formula One game from two years ago. They have removed it from sale. That Formula One game, I think, I think that Formula One game has, yeah, it's got breaking point. It has a campaign. It has a campaign that like some people, you know, they put their likenesses in that game. People animated it, people voice acted it, people, uh, you know, directed the cinematography, people programmed the, the events, people, um, there's music involved, uh, it was a big selling point of the game. I don't know though, because when Codemasters were producing all the games before, they, they did eventually remove some older ones, but they did keep F1 2011 on Steam for a very long time, because I only bought them back in 2020. I know 2010 had licensed music, and that was something that they then said, Let's not have music in these games because, you know, we can't permanently license them. Or maybe it was the games one does live. Something like that. Um, this is purely, and I, I legitimately think this, I think they just removed it because they want you to buy F1 2020. Oh, sorry, 2022. Or 23. Which are c conveniently not on sale during the Steam sale. Uh, Rare's copy of just pure gold man. You hold up. Yeah, exactly. But to that, I would then say, hey, you know, like... Does it matter how people play F1 2021 now? You can't buy it from digital storefronts. There is no way, I think, I, I've never seen it retail. There is no way for you to witness that game and the content and the, th and the work that people put into it. What if you playing F1 21 via whatever means necessary convinces you to play other F1 games? That it, like, I think there is the, the grounds to have that, and that's why I'm like, hey, you know, like, if these games are super old, 
there should be some sort of, you know, way for the... Like, it, does it really cost EA anything? Because I guess EA are publishing now. Does it cost them anything to, like, post that? Uh, or does it cost them anything to still keep it on Steam? Is If it's a licensing thing, like, what can they do about it? I don't think... Because I, I, I know, for, for example... When a, when a sponsor licenses their brand name onto a car livery, like in F1, that livery is permanently on their car. It's on that car forever. When that car appears in later, you know, things or, you know, events or whatever, they don't have to re-license the names that were on the car during that season. The names are there. It's just physically there. And, like... We don't even change any of that for, like, moral purposes. There's, like, Marlboro ads on all these cars. We're advertising cigarettes and and alcohol on the, side, on the sides of these cars. We're probably gonna, like, you know, in 30 years' time, we'll go, look at the Crypto.com car. You know, <laughs> like, stuff like that. You know, we don't have to pay for the, for the brand to be there. In the same way, I don't like how, like, music seems to also be a tricky one to license. Um, maybe it's a bit trickier because it's like one's a brand name and one is like, you know, the actual media that someone created. That music is there. You're contextualizing it somewhat by putting it into a, into a film or a game or something like that. But it's like, you know, there was a big problem with Guitar Hero when it came out where people would buy Guitar Hero and then effectively they now were the owners of like 80 songs stripped down to their master tracks as well not to their master tracks but like you know the instruments were remastered and so it's like this interesting like newer version of these songs and you could effectively rip the songs from the game if you just recorded it right um and uh yeah if you if you said oh yeah you know they did that and they only paid like 60 bucks for the the game it's like wow that's way more efficient than you know buying albums even if it is only so many songs and you gotta go out of your way in order to extract the music from it. You know, you can make the case of like, oh, you know, it's cheaper than actually buying music, but... You know, that's the, that's the medium, that's the product someone sold, someone created. And even, even, you know, licensed stuff aside, people spend time and effort on that product. There's, there's potentially people where it's like, that's the only Codemasters game they ever, they ever made. And, uh... Their credit is gone. Well, not it's not gone, is it? But like, no one can witness what they what they made. It existed only for a point in time when we live when when video games are a permanent media. When you make a video game and you release it out to the world, people out there will be playing that and will will have copies of that, those files for you know generations. Why is it that EA is like eh, don't sell it? I don't get it. I really don't get it. It doesn't make sense from a business standpoint unless you get more sales from constantly selling the newest version of the game. It works for Call of Duty because Call of Duty has a very, like, you know, a very transient user base that will keep moving from game to game. But, uh, this is F1. Also, F1 has a single player and it really doesn't matter at that point. I played the single player F1 2011. So, like, I like these F1 games because they are snapshots into history as well. You get to see what horses they drove on and what they looked like, technology at the time. Like, F1 2010, when I played it, is actually a remarkably impressive game. It is super cool how all the weather effects work. Um, we got two level 50s, by the way. Uh, what's... I'm gonna keep Nonogram up front, but I'm also gonna be a bit terrified when see how this goes. Um... Yeah, we'll give Sedimentar the thing, because, uh, you gotta give him the slow stuff. Now, this is a lot. <laughs> We've done a lot of stream already. Uh, yeah, this is a, this is a grinding stream. The I will, I will say, at the beginning of the stream, both Armaldo and Grumpig were level 40. They were woefully underleveled. They were very, very, very underleveled. Um, which is why I still have level 38 Swampert. Only two levels above evolving. Uh, no, 
Now this is gonna be kind of weird though, because uh, I'm not exactly hitting this guy with a super effective attack. Or I could just do that as well. That works too. Um, I do think I might get like, you know, cut off by uh, by uh, gold bats. They might get me, but we'll see how this goes. So uh, the plan is, uh, for reference, the plan for the um, the rest of the game is that uh, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep grinding for a bit. I don't I don't really think I'd you know I'm, I'm gonna get everyone to an appropriate level uh, for this. Wow, really? Uh, I don't think I'm gonna get everyone to an appropriate level to take on the um, Elite Four this time around. Um, but uh, next week. Uh, we should be able to give it a go. Wow, I've got nothing for Valeron. Yeah, we gotta switch out the Swamp Hut every time. Uh, but yeah, next stream I should be able to have a crack at it. And then, um, we've really got the... Pff, so much dramatic build-up, and then I can't, can't capitalize on it. Uh, but we should be able to take on Elite Four, and then... There's not really much of a post-game that I'd like to do. Yeah, I really want Nolan to be able to take out people, but he's just, he's not. Gonna try to catch me when I do? That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I was, I was expecting better. I was expecting better. Not even Surf is like the attack I want to do. Earthquakes and Return are the stronger attacks. Oh yeah, Surf on Lyra, I'm sure, yeah. But like, yeah, I mean, that attack and that special attack, I... Mm... Surf might be a little better. Surf might be a little better than Return, but Earthquake should be the, yeah, the de facto move. Why is special attack so low? It might be the nature. It's lonely nature, but it's special attack. Swampert is not a very high special attacker, like, relative to his attack. He's, he's definitely a physical attacker, and that's what catches out Swampert, is that, he, yeah, like, <laughs> he can't use his water attacks in this game. He's just not as good. Also, he's level 39. He's considerably lower level than everyone else, so... And he's still got Mud Shot, and I probably need to teach him a fourth attack. I had Iron Tail as the thing I wrote down for him. There you go. Mud Guida! Did I not teach him... I guess I didn't teach him... I don't know why I didn't teach him Iron Tail. I think my only thing with Iron Tail is that uh, I'm worried it's going to be a little risky. We'd be looking up things, we'd be finding out information. Oh! My audio died. Again. Do you remember this happened on a previous stream and now it's back? Don't know what was going on there. Do you remember that happened on an older stream? I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Cuts the air. So, yeah, my only thing with Swampert is that I don't exactly know what would be another good attack to teach him. The problem is, I've already burnt Brick Break as well. I can't teach him Brick Break. Um, and then when it comes to, like, normal attacks, we could do Focus Punch, but as. Focus Punch is a bit risky of a move. And I'm slower than the Golbat still, so... We're gonna get into this awkward, confused spam. Um, the only other physical attacks you could learn is uh, potentially Hidden Power. So we can give Hidden Power a go. Um, Hyper Beam? I've, I've 
I've questioned it. I worry that Hyper Beam is uh, too overkill. And I got Swamp Hunt, so. Iron Tail definitely will do a lot of damage, but it's got 75 accuracy, so. Yeah, the fact that Swamp Hunt's getting, like, killed off by Goldbat doesn't instill confidence in me, but... It could also be just, like, low effort values. You can't exactly confirm... Well, maybe you can't confirm it. <laughs> maybe you can. I don't know exactly. I know Goldbat is far, so... Yeah, okay, Golbat is gonna, like, kind of sweep through, but... Given that, like, Grumpig was fine pretty quickly... Like, hold on, we just look at the, the speed. 68, 76, like, well, it's a bit high level. Now, Cargo is gonna be slow as. Yeah, I mean, like, Grumpig is very fast right now. I guess Grumpig is faster, but yeah. Since you have leveled a lot, it's very hard to confirm the actual effort about... Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna get some gaming in, I'll catch around whenever you stream, bud. Hope you're running some, some shinies. Oh yeah, that as well, like... When are we getting the shiny going on? Nah, I... Well, I mean, you... Mm, you're gonna have to hope that I showed the stats when I caught it. Um... And then you get you can take a good guess, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure I showed the stats right away. I'm curious what speed these Golbats have, though. Also, I like how- yep, that goes on my health, to like one Golbat. Look at that. Technically, you could watch the stream and keep track of what- yeah, yeah. Oh, my cleanse tag. Why have I still got the cleanse tag on? Ah, oh, not smelling salt. I think I've seen like two crowbats this game. This is technically the. Yeah, the. The Team Aqua people. I've had Corbats, yeah. You, I, can you actually, like, predict what the wild Pokemon... Like, wild Pokemon have random IVs, don't they? So you can't exactly predict, like, how much speed they have. Um, best you can say is... Um, yeah. Like, you, you don't really know what speed they have, um, unless you, you, know, you catch it and then you realize. Um, so I feel like there's always a possibility that these Golbats are going to be faster than me. No matter how well, they weren't ever, like, higher than 100, well, 100, I guess I'd say. Uh, solution number, like... An alternative is to go into daycare. And then you just ride the bike a ton. I don't know if that actually is, like, quicker, though. The daycare, you get the advantage of, I think it's like every step you take once your Pokemon are in the daycare. Yeah, this, the stretch is a pretty good, like, stretch, because you could just, like, hit, um... I still have the... Oh, I can... Go into the bag, and uh, we go to key items, and uh, make sure you got the mark bike. But yeah, you could go to the daycare, um, put two Pokemon in, and then every step you make, um, and yeah, you can refight trainers. Yeah, yeah. Um, every step you make uh, gives one experience to each Pokemon. Um, so in theory, you just have to put a, put two Pokemon in, and then go back and forth a bajillion times. I'm not too sure, someone's probably done the math on like how fast your walking speed is, but I can guarantee if I want to get like a thousand experience 
I don't know, my odds might be a bit better if I can like reliably take out Pokemon with this. Uh, there is one spot where you can drive from left to the wall, the mountain you can go straight. Yes, you can go super far, I know that. Uh... No, my cleanse tag again. But then, yeah, I'd say, like, you know, I fought this hairy armor in, like, 20 seconds, and it gave a thousand experience. Uh, and there are a lot of trains you can refight there that have full teams of level 30 Pokemon. Honestly, those would be better for experience. My only thing is, how reliably can you fight them? Like, how, how, um, you know, when, when do they allow you to refight them, by the way? Uh, they definitely, I mean, the nice thing about trainers is that a level 30 trainer Pokemon is not exactly any harder than a level 30 wild Pokemon. I do see people recommend that, like, because you got, yeah, those breeders that will have just the spam level 30 Pokemon. Um, and you probably get, like, you know, once they've evolved, and I think they do evolve, you know, you might get more experience out of those fights pretty quickly compared to just fighting wild Pokemon, especially, like, the Zubat is, like, not that worth it. I can look it up for you while I'm looking on the side. Uh, Pokemon Sapphire, when can you refight? So you fight them, just drive the route five times in two minutes and then refight them. Uh, people are just saying, use the nav, and I'm like, yeah, okay, but what's the actual math of it? Here we go. If the player is on a map with eligible trainers, uh, it will. Each trainer on the map has a separate 31% chance to demand a rematch every 255 steps. There you go. Uh, this is after the balance badge, by the way. So, yeah. Balance badge? Oh, the fifth badge. Yeah. That's interesting that there's no refighting until then. Yeah, so it sort of complements with the um, yeah, with the the daycare, I guess. In theory, I could do that. Let's, how about let's give it a go? We're two hours into the stream, and uh, I'm not gonna get the other Pokemon leveled up <laughs> as quickly. But this hairy armor is very nice when you take him down. Any smells. Before you get that badge, you don't do- Yeah, exactly. Like, when you get that badge, you've done all the- Well, once you get that badge, you've done all the, like, backtracking around the left half of the map anyways, so... Yeah, but let's do that. Let's, uh, mosey on around and, uh, give that route a check and then put the two Pokemon in the daycare and hope that, uh... They don't learn anything because they are going to accidentally learn stuff in the daycare. And it's going to get kind of annoying. Oh, I've got. I've got red candies as well. <laughs> uh. Don't uh, even put them in the daycare, just fight. I'll just fight the trainers? Okay, sure. Uh, so we're going to need a Tropius on the way out, but to be honest, Armada does not need anything at all. Alright, so my litmus test is uh, some of the Pokemon in the... Is it, is it a litmus test? It's not really a litmus test. Um, but some of the Pokemon in the Victory Road were giving like a thousand experience total. And some of them were giving like 300. Uh, particularly, I know the two trainers are... This one person. No, not this person. That guy's just a cyclist. What's the... Uh, what's the breeder? 
It's not this guy, is it? I've got witch trainers in particular. I know there's one person who... Yeah, there's one person to the right who's got, like, more stuff. Uh, here I am, refighting trainers. In the level 28 dojo. Please return. That dojo is toast. I'm not expecting much experience out of the dojo. But that is a decent experience. Oh, do I have to refight through, like, earlier stages as well? Quite a straight route, but it is pretty far. Assume this guy doesn't fight me, right? No. Who's the? Gosh, I don't know which one's the, the breeder, but. One bit of grass. The one on the left of the trees, and the guy running above him. Yeah, I thought so. So they're not, like, they're just not ready yet. Every 256 steps, you say. See, I guess compared to the wild Pokemon, which you do have to heal a bit more often with the wild Pokemon, I guess. Go all the way to the right. Like, all the way. Can I just, like, do this? <laughs> What's he talking about? Like, this lady? No, she wasn't, like, the breeder, though. Oh, that, yeah, that lady had a Roselia, that is true. Uh, I mean, I mean, we'll fight, we'll fight these trainers, we'll give them, we'll give them goes. This makes me wonder whether I ever fought them at all. No, I would have had lower level Pokemon the first time, this is a refight. Those two, the two breeders and the lady with the dojo with the five I kept refining. I mean, the nice thing is that like, it seemed that like all trainers would have like a 31% chance when you walked into the route with them. Actually, was that in the route with them? Is that it? When players on the map with eligible trainers, each trainer on the map has a separate 31% chance of remaining in the So it's, yeah, it's, it sounds like you just gotta be on the map with them. And then eventually, after enough steps, they'll ask for a refight. Like, this person will be like, oh, I'll refight you. Again, yeah. Come on, lady with the dojo. Wanna become a dojo by now? That's level 31. It gained six levels in no time. That's what the daycare does for you. That's a bit of experience, it's less than the hairy armor, but... It's a lot simpler than the hairy armor, I guess. And this guy will fight, so... This guy, I'm expecting the beef. I'm expecting the beef from this one. But they're all level 25 right now, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> dang it. Yeah, I don't, re I don't remember the running guy. And of course, very importantly, how many trainers can you refire in this game? Uh, I mean, they're giving... These ones are like 700, which is actually pretty okay. How fast you kill them is definitely important. Um, this Aaron is not going to give me enough, but... I think, uh... 
the, um... Yeah, like, that's like 500. But yeah, I mean, you are right, you can kill them fast. The, the thing I wasn't too sure... And yeah, yeah, once the once they're evolved, because I know when you refight them, it's like... Like, these breeders is like, yeah, it'll be like level 31, that'll be a Laron. Um, I think they'll have a Swallow. Oh, they got a Swallow now. Oh, and they, they, they have a hairy armor as well, like, yeah, you know, all of these are decent, like, decent levels, so... Would you Tropic Bird Plant in the thingy? I don't need to level the Tropic Bird Plant. The Tropic Bird Plant's not on my team. I don't need a grass type, you don't need one for the, for the Elite Four. You, you need a grass type for the water gym, <laughs> and I'm already past that point. Because the thing is that, like, the only thing that your grass type is actually going to be, like, he is, yes, yes, my, my one, my true love, my HM slave. I swear this person is one of the breeders, but sure, okay. Uh, we'll sell on pass. Um, but yeah, for, for just for reference, like, what types do you actually need for the for the Elite Four in the end? Uh, definitely the first guy, because he's got one grass... He's got two grass types, but only one of them actually will attack you with grass type attacks. Uh, but I don't think a grass type really helps against the Sharpedo, but I've got, I've got other things I can use against the Sharpedo. So... Since he's mostly dark type though, like your your best bet is the fighting type attack, so I'm gonna rely on the uh, the setup basically. We got gloom. Uh, the second one, since it's all ghost types except for one dark ghost, which you can't really deal with for super effective stuff. But since it's all ghost type, I don't know. You just use psychic type attacks and you're, you're set. Like if we're just going with like, oh, you know, wait, no, sorry, not psychic. Um, another ghost attack. So good thing Nin Ninjas has Shadow Ball. Uh, third gym, Ice Gym. Oh, Ice. Sorry, third person is an Ice type. Uh, except three of them are Ice Water. I guess your Grass would come in handy there, but you could also just use Electric. And I got two options on that one, so that's all fine. Dragon type one. I got Ice. We're cool. What's that? Ish? Again, it's still ish, but I got a lot of, like, attacks that probably aren't gonna be too... too caught out by that. And then, uh, the last one, uh, we're gonna hope that fire and water do okay. We're gonna really hope. And the interesting thing about fighting trainers a bunch is that I'm also getting money. Which means I can make the item spam even worse. Like, how much money am I gonna get at the end of this? 896? You fight, like, <laughs> how much is a full restore in this game? It's too much, ain't it? But yeah, I... I don't think a grass type... Like, you can't really use a grass type against the dragon guy in the Elite Four. Um... There's not really a great place, and two of them have flamethrower, so... And also one of them is fly, so... I think you get a bit caught out from that one. Um... i definitely say the grass side helps a lot going up to this, you know... Getting up to this point in the game. Well, yeah, yeah, the grass starter is that strong, yes. I don't know if I could catch anything else, though, to really compete. That's grass type. Uh, you could use bile plume. Gentry is so good. It is good. 
You get a lot of options as well. That's that's the important part. What I'm doing, do not try this at home. But uh, you can, you can sort of do like whatever. It all works out fine. I don't think I've done 255 steps. The only gripe I have is the one that only came up after Gen 4 came out. The physical special split? Yep. Physical special split. Because it makes so much sense and it just like, it makes the mechanics like so much more fresh. And that's what makes Gen 4 like so good. What do you mean? Do you not like the revamped contests? Got Hitmonchan and Leaf Green. There are some Pokemon as well, like uh, when I played Gen 1, and because the special, like, stat was both attack and defense in one stat, but they tried to sum up the, you know, the base stats as a, you know, that was what they balanced. That meant that any Pokemon that favored special would probably have better stats in general as well. Uh, and that meant Pokemon like Cloyster were amazing in first gen. And then Cloyster re-became special. Oh yeah, 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 because it's all... it's all the wrong types. Like, I'm getting experience. I'm getting money, so I guess that's the side benefit of that. This is, I mean, this is a team full of level 22s because I just haven't, you know, refought this person before. I think you gotta refight them three times. I'm gonna truly max out the stream. Uh, now with the split. But yeah, oh yeah, exactly. And that's why, like, Hidden Power was, like, kind of impressive as well. Because it was like, hey, you know, your Pokemon uses a special. And suddenly it's just like hidden power, it's just like, hey, here's a really good special attack of whatever type you effectively feel like. Yeah, they also, I mean, yeah, they also introduce attacks that are identical, but they are physical or special. Like, Hyper Beam was always, like, this crazy strong attack, and then it's like, well, now Hyper Beam is special, so we need Giga Impact as a, you know, as a physical variant, and there's more moves like that as well. Die, skinny. Yeah, not much experience, but that's just because they're level 22 and not evolved. So, we'll get this person a couple of extra goes. Apparently none of these other people want to fight. Okay, sure. I worry that if you're gonna grind here, though, there's a bit too much downtime. Like, that's- that's my only worry here. Like, I'm gonna be fighting this guy, he's gonna come at me with his, you know, now it's a magneton- Oh, this guy gets up to level 34, jeez! You get to refight him four times, wow. Maybe that is the gist. Find your trainers that are next level. I think also what makes the spot great is how close they are as well. Yeah, I'm seeing that they get teams of like level 31 in the end. And like, this guy, he's still gotta go up to level 34, but it's like, yeah, like, how much experience is this Magneton doing? 534, you know, times 2. That's pretty good. But yeah, your, your only catch is that, yeah, you gotta walk between them and then kind of guess which ones you gotta fight. It's probably really good for the breeders, though, because not every Pokemon in the Victory Road is exactly that worthwhile either. And... When they attack first, it's annoying, so... <sighs> I'm not gonna talk about Toy Story Racer at all, I feel like I've already talked about it before, but I'll, I'll just mention it. Toy Story Racer is a, is a, the other game I played, uh, and uh, Traveler's Tales 
had already made a fairly decent kart racer. Toy Story Racer is just less of a game. Uh, compared to Muppet Race Mania, it is a kart racer where you drive around 11, I think, Toy Story 1 inspired locations. Like Andy's house, Sid's house, Pizza Planet building, Pizza Planet mall? Um, a backyard. Another back. It's like, oh, okay, we're really stripping at straws on this one. Um, but okay, sure. There's five battle arena courses. One of them is literally a basketball court. Okay, sure. Um, I could probably use Surf. I haven't been using Surf, but it's like, yeah, I'll probably kill this added. Um,. But yeah, sure. Uh, Kart Racer, you got 12 characters. Uh, you start off with four, and uh, as you work through the game, you'll unlock more. The game is structured by, uh, basically, you do missions? I guess they're, they're missions, but... Um, uh, so it's like, sometimes it's like, you know, you just do a race, or this is a tournament race, or this is a... Uh, like a battle where you have to knock out the opponents, or one is just like you last to the end. Some, uh, you go against the time. There are some really awkward missions that are like, you drive around a track and you just have to tag the opponents, either physically or with an item. But they never put a time limit on any of them, so it's just like, you're just going around hoping you'll eventually tap them, and you eventually do. Like, okay, sure. Um, none of them are really that difficult, like when you play through it's not that bad. The difficulty comes from the retro achievements, again, thanks retro achievements. Um, some some poor person was like, let's let's make it so that uh, you have to get 22 knockouts in four rounds of the battle mode, and there's only seven opponents each round, so that's 28 total. You're relying on so much, so much luck to just make sure that the opponents do not get knocked out before you get to knock them out. Um, it's not... It didn't take a crazy amount of time, but it was like, yeah, kind of annoying. Kind of inconvenient. So sure, okay. Um, uh, the worst part about the game is the items. They're not fun. You basically, like, the item boxes just randomly pop up, and they'll randomly disappear when the game feels like it. Um, they probably last for a certain amount of time, but you don't know how long they've been there. They're just gonna disappear in front of you. So, uh, the item boxes come in four different colors, and each color has the possibility of two different items. You hit the red ones, I know this will just rough off my head, you hit the red one, the red one is the best ones. You'll either get one ability, which, uh, gives you an electric charge and you can shock a person near you. Uh, it, it literally just shows their face and you'll know you're hitting them. Uh, or a turbo boost. And the turbo boost is super useful, but it doesn't appear in battle mode, so you can always guarantee the attack that guarantees a hit. Nice. You hit the blue one, you get the ability... You get either a rocket that just goes forward. It's like a green shell in Mario Kart, but it doesn't, you know, bounce off things. It just kind of dies immediately. Um, it, awkward, it awkwardly launches off ramps as well, but that's never useful. Um, or a UFO. The UFO will probably... It's like a blue shell. It goes forward in the track and will eventually probably hit someone. In battle mode, it, it just goes wherever. I don't know what on earth it's doing, but it just... I don't know. It goes all over. It's very hard to hit people with it. So, hey, hope for the rocket, but... And uh, the camera's a little bit weird. The camera's a little bit weird, so it's hard to aim with the blue shell. Or the, 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 sorry. Well, it is hard to aim with the blue shell anyways, but it's also hard to aim with the, uh, thing. No, this is the fast bike. This is the fast one. That is the Mac bike. The acro bike is really slow. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've not been using the acro bike all game. It's always been the Mac bike. Because I've gone up hills and I've never traded it. Um, so, okay, so then the, uh, what is it, the yellow boxes will either have a bowling ball. The bowling ball is like the blue, the, yeah, it's like the rocket, but it rolls down hills. And it's a little wider, but it's also kind of weird to use. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Uh, it also sometimes drops a spinning top. 
No. Drop something. I forgot what it was. Um, there's a spinning top item in one of them. The spinning top item just hangs around and it sort of homes in on enemies, but... Sort of. It's very slow. Ah. Uh, there is a... Um, a sheep. The sheep just stands there. Doesn't exactly do anything. And, uh... There's one other item. I've completely forgotten what it was. That's... I don't know, man. It, you care about the rockets and the, the automatic homing thing. The one catch you get is that if you're holding an item, if someone hits you, you just drop the item, but you don't actually spin out. In battle mode, that actually is your saving grace, and you're going to be using that to basically bait uses of items out from other people. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I did just kind of describe the entirety of the game. You get to the end of the game, and then it just asks you to do a sliding puzzle, and then the credits roll. For that character, but all the characters have their own challenges. There are 200 challenges total. When you do all of them, you have just done 12 sliding puzzles. That is your reward. It is a rather rewardless game, and you'd be playing the same levels over and over again too much. There are reverse versions of some of the stages, but it's fairly, you know, un unoriginal, we'll just say. You've done the, the forward version, now just drive backwards. We didn't even change any of the signs. None of the levels are really that interesting. A lot of them are filled with so many right angles. Um, the camera is kind of loose and it's very hard in battle mode. It's fine when you're driving, you'll get used to it. But there's no drifting either. There's a kart racer and really, you just go forward. Yeah, the Mirror Cup is interesting. Um, but like, this is a proper like reverse um, course, but it's... There's nothing really going on with a reverse course, because the tracks are pretty samey. There's nothing really too weird going on. Best I can say for originality is one of the tracks has uh, is on snow, and therefore it's just super slidey. Um, yeah, Mirror Cup and Mario is great, because, like, yeah, you don't want to muscle memory the corners. I actually, I really dig, like, and I, I know it's like we're getting into different genres, but I really dig Gran Turismo in, like, sort of standardizing reverse layouts a lot, because reverse layouts are fun. Unless the corners are really bad. Um, but, like, there's a lot of tracks in Gran Turismo where it's like, yeah, the reverse versions feel very different. And it's, uh, it's an easy way to double the amount of content of the game, but it's like, make, yeah, make the tracks interesting to do differently. That is your way to, yeah, to make your content last a bit longer. Like, as much as I like, yeah, Gran Turismo... Well, well, this is not even a bad point. I love Gran Turismo, and I think one thing that makes, you know, hey, we've got 20-something tracks in the, or 50 tracks in Gran Turismo, uh, four, for example, and you can drive them backwards. So it's like, oh, you know, like Opera Paris, for example, is a very different track backwards compared to forwards because suddenly all the speedy bits are right after the tight corners as opposed to right before them. So you're not just bolting your way into a fast corner, it's like, you're gonna exit into a, into a straight. So Metroid randomizers, um, yeah, yeah, I've never actually gotten all the way through Metroid Randomizer, but I have tried Metroid Prime Randomizing. Um, I would like to continue giving it a go, but yeah, like, Randomizers are great as well. Um, I know, and, and if anything, you know, that's why people do challenges in Pokemon, and, and fun personal challenges on games are always, you know, well, not always, but like, there are some that make a lot of sense, and there are some that, you yeah, know, like, uh, the idea counts. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, a lot of people really enjoy these kinds of challenges when they know the game so much, and that's why, like, you know, like, I, I, I did Guitar Hero a bunch, and I was like, yeah, like, once people started getting into, like, FCing and full comboing songs, and then it's like, let's try and do full comboing with, uh, Hyperspeed on, or, um, sadistically they'd have performance mode on, where it's like you don't even see the chart, it's just remembering it. I have legitimately beaten songs in performance mode. I think I've done... I think I did an FC of Monsoon for Guitar Hero World Tour. I think I did that. Because all the notes are, like, 
on the beat, and so if you just remember the pattern of the notes, I had a lot of time as, as a 13 year old. Um, yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff is like nice and fun and interesting. I think there's definitely some games now that like have randomized, well, not randomized, but like, well, some of them actually do. Um, but like, will sort of support these like special modes, um, so they have like official like kind of yeah, kind of wacky modes. Actually, you know what's a game that reminds me off the top of my head? Dragon Quest Eleven has wacky like settings you can turn on. One of the settings is hilarious. It's like it makes all the town folk like speak to you like it's Castlevania Two, and they're just talking riddles and they don't actually tell you what you're doing. It's hilarious. <laughs> It gets me every time, but it's like, yeah, like, it's fun to just, like, have stuff that you can turn on like that. Some of those modes, I don't think, really make the game better. There's one where it's like, if the main character dies, the game ends. Or, like, you know, it's a game over and you gotta reload your save. I don't like that one. I prefer, you know, the whole, hey, the party can revive the main character. Um, but then it's like, hey, you know, we can make the enemies a bit tougher, or, um... Uh, you know, like, uh, what's one, you know, like, the experience growth is a little slow, or, um, hold on, let me see if I can get the other, the other one, it's, uh, the other modes. This is specifically with Dragon Quest 11 S, by the way. These are called the Draconian Quests, I believe. There we go. Ah yes, okay, so one of them is no fleeing from battle. No shopping. No armor. Reduce experience from easy fights. That one's an interesting one. All enemies are super strong. Uh, this is the main character. Chai Pops the main... Is this... Shypox, the main character, is cursed, uh, randomly losing turns and battles, as well as freezing up random NPC interactions, and retry speaking to the NPC. It's just annoying? Okay, sure. That kind of stuff is hilarious, though. That is the original game's one, so let me, let me double check. That's, uh... we got. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's just one called Characters Lies in the Town. Characters can lie to you. It's just hilarious. And then, yeah, Annihilation when the hero dies, it's game over. The entire party can become too shy to fight. Ooh. Would recommend Dragon Quest XI. It's great fun. One day, one day, I might give it a go, but long RPGs definitely, like, they may or may not be the most fun to play on a, on a stream because it's just like, you got a lot of content, and when I'm only doing these, uh, you know, at this rate, they start edging towards three hour streams. I have not done a less than two hour stream in a long while. Um, Get our level 34 Dodrio. Doge, yeah, you definitely get a fair bit of experience off these. Faster than the Victory Road. I'm on the fence. I am on the fence. I'm not 100% sure if it is faster though. Because you're still like, you know, like, there's downtime. You're just wandering around. You're definitely getting friendship. That is 100% what's going on here, but... And you're getting money. It's always useful. But yeah, you don't know quite when you want to fight them. 
It's a lot better in uh, Fire and Leaf Green, where you just tap a button and every single person is able to refight you. Maybe. It's a maybe, but it's like, yeah, you know. Getsy going for it. Pelipper. Everyone likes a good old Pelipper. Yeah. Ah. He does. He does give quite a fair bit. Roselia here. It's actually fairly okay. I was expecting way less from Roselia. Breloom, I think, gives a lot. Yeah, I, I can imagine, like, there's a lot of playtime spent, like, grinding here, because until you're able to consistently fight in the Elite Four, and even then, like, after the Elite Four, your, your Pokemon are kind of good enough already for most of what you're doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, you'd level to level 50, because, yeah, when you fight people in, uh, in multiplayer, and it's like, oh, we scale to level 50, but if your Pokemon are below level 50, they don't scale up, they just stay at whatever level they were. I forgot which Pokemon game changes that, but like, I know by at least X and Y, like, they, they fix it. In the sense of, if a Pokemon is below level 50, they are boosted up to level 50. You're still, of course, lacking effort values, you're gonna be a little behind, um, you know, unless you just have a lot of effort values. But at least it's a bit better than not being able to compete at all with anyone. I wonder why they chose level 50 as well. Like... What difference is it to fight at level 50 compared to level 100 other than... Dragon Rage and Sonic Boom are absolutely worthless at level 100. But... Yeah, no, the um... Yeah, I do remember fighting here a bit, I just... Yeah, I wasn't too sure if it was going to be faster. I was tops in swimming and cycling, but I can't run. Um... Yeah. Yeah, I got, I got a lot of games I want to play on this channel. I, I guess I've realized at the end of the day. There's a lot of... A lot of interesting things, so... Uh... As a... As a uh, I guess a 15 year... You know, kind of... This is a 15 year celebration stream. I feel like next week I'd more do that, but um, as a bit of a retrospective, um, you know, like, these streams are good fun. Even if it's like, oh, you know, I'm just like grinding Pokemon right now, like I'm not really doing anything that engaging. It's it's nice to be able to kind of monologue and, and or even chat um, and uh, just, you know, get some opinion, get some ideas. Finding out some new things, I've learned some things from, from the chat. Um, and then also just like being able to play these games in a bit more of a, a genuine way. Like, I don't expect people to actively watch uh, all my content, but I am surprised when I see that count and that average view time slightly going up over time. Um, newer streams, the VODs actually are getting like, you know, the average view time is not two minutes now, it's like ten minutes. And the thing gets like 20 views. That's like three hours of people's time I just wasted. That's incredible. So, uh, if you legit watch my stuff, you know, like, I, I thank you so much for, for, you know, sticking around and watching it. And <laughs> But yeah, no, I, ju I just do this because uh, it's fun and it's, it's good to do this. And, you know, some people do it for, for money, for fame. You know, I, all that stuff's kind of gone past me now. I'm, <laughs> I'm past my prime if I was to become a, a fun... Uh, well, <laughs> I try to be fun. But, like, I'm past my prime when it comes to be a, um... Uh... Like a, a full-time... Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thank you so much, Blob. Interesting chats, and you kind of fully oral reviews. Yeah, yeah, I... I would like to, like... Learn how to conveyed and writing better, but I also feel like a lot of people don't, like, read. No one wants to read stuff. That's why IGN is stuck with reading out their video reviews. Yeah, yeah, the Toy Story one. Yeah, like, now you know 
everything about the Buzz Lightyear game and the Toy Story video game. Oh, I guess the one thing about Toy, Toy Story Racer I forgot to mention as well is, um, the presentation's a bit okay. It's got this nice fun thing where it has a little transition when you go from the menus into the race, and it loads fairly quickly. That's a plus. And uh, if you like the music in Toy Story 2, you'll probably like the music in both these games. It's got the same composer doing kind of the same style for both of them, so there's that. But there's nothing as, like, punchy that screams out to me in those games. I'd probably stick with the Muppet Race Mania soundtrack. Would recommend. Give Muppet Race Mania a try. Maybe one day that'll end up on my channel. I have a lot of, like, games around that area I would love to, to toy around with um, and play on the, the channel. Uh, and that's that's the fun part, is that, like, I originally set out to just be like, I, I wanted to do a little bit of a redo, a little bit of a rehash, um, because doing, like, pre-recorded Let's Plays, you don't, like, well, you don't, you don't get to chat to people, but you do still get to monologue. And I found I was pre-recording them a lot, and I would not have a monologue topic for, like, later streams. Uh, whereas doing these every week is, like, it's kind of fun, because you get to have a bit of a regular schedule going on. So, it's like, hey, I have a week's worth of information going on. Um, usually, I, I try to, like, talk about, like, tech news as well. It's been a slow week, so I haven't had anything to really say. Um, there's an RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabytes coming out next week. Later next week, so I think not quite the next stream, but the one after. I got nothing to say about it. <laughs> but, uh, we'll see when it comes out. I don't know. There's a lot of fun things I, I, I'd love to talk about. But, yeah, when I was pre-recording them all, I think I felt a little burnt out. Uh, maybe it's because I tried competing with, uh, the bigger ones in the sense of, like, I would try to do the same kinds of material and the same content and quality of material. And, uh, at the end of the day, I don't have enough patience and enough time uh, to do so much investigation into a Pokemon game. And now, I don't know, it's been way too long and I start to forget about how to play Pokemon. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I didn't even beat... I didn't even play Sun 2. <laughs> Stuff like that. I haven't even been Scarlet. Someone's gonna yell at me on that one. Um... But yeah, like, the stream format, it works nicely for me. Uh, people are sort of watching the streams, and you know what? Like, if one person watches them, that's all That's all I care about. As long as, you know, you're having a good time, that's all, that's all, yeah. Or if you sort of enjoy the things I say. And yeah, some, some person was like, hit me up on Twitter DMs. You know, okay, sure. So, you know, I wouldn't strongly encourage us asking me to sliding into my DMs all the time, but yeah, I definitely like. Good old Cloud, by the way. I love him. I was half tempted to have Cloud on my team. He definitely gives a lot of experience. Yeah. But yeah, if, if you think that, like, I mean, I guess I'd never played Pokemon Sapphire on my channel before, but yeah, if you think that I've been playing a lot of the, just the same games I played from the beginning, yeah, you're sort of right, but it's also, as, as I've grown a bit more comfortable doing streams and, and long form talking again, um, I'm also a bit more, okay, I guess, like, what kinds of, you know, streams could I do? I, I've done one-off streams. I've done games where it's like, this is a racing game and I pretty much only play it for like a moment. Um, I would like to show off some more. I have actually other ideas of, uh, of games. I like how Kipperoni can learn Protect. It's a very interesting attack. Uh... Yeah, like, I, I have ideas for, like, yeah, one-off streams or other kinds of short-form ideas I'd love to do. Um, I hope people as well, like, if you haven't seen um, the stream I did last year on the PlayStation Magazine, that's one where it's like, you know, I would love to know if people... I don't know why I'm using it, I'm sure. 
Um, I would love to know, like, what people think about, like, that kind of content, or, um, because it was like, oh, I'm checking out demo discs and magazines in one stream, and I, I like the idea, uh, even if it wasn't like I'm working through a game. It was just, you know, you know, it's interesting. Um, and I, I, I sort of want to still do that, where it's like I play through a game with a bit of an interesting twist, or at least I play it in a way that's, you know, it means something to me. Um, or, you know, in, in the case of, like, Resident Evil, it's a blind playthrough. It's, you know, like, I've never really played survival horrors, and then this was how I played it. Is that, is, is that how normal people play survival horrors? Maybe? I don't know. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I want to try and play things in, in sort of interesting ways and maybe show you something about them if I know stuff about it like that. Um, but yeah, having the chats, if, if you're not here to chat live, you know, even if you leave comments, it's all good. Um, or if you're just a silent watcher, you know, I appreciate your stuff. Uh, some people upvote, some people don't. Uh, no one gets to see the downvote count, so you can't tell if people are downvoting or not. Um, it's very hard to interact, but yeah. Um, yeah, some people leave nice comments. You know, I don't exactly feel like I have uh, the, um, the know-how or the exact drive to even you know, lead a community or anything, but just being able to interact with individuals, that's the cool part. That's, that's, you know, that's the best part about it, so. Uh, if, you enjoy, if you enjoy that monologue, thank you, I just wanted to, to ramble on about that a bit. So I'll pretty much call it at 11.30, which is in 14 minutes, and then we'll just have a sleep, and uh, next week, I, I don't know, we'll continue on with this, but it should be much closer to being able to handle everything. Like, Kipperoni is, you know, mid-46 now, Mac Cargo is, you know, he's nearly 100,000, yeah, Kip well, Kipperoni doesn't have to hit 100,000, does he? Sorry, 125,000. He's only got to hit 110,000, doesn't he? And then Grumpig's ready. Uh, Ninjask is... Not actually that far away, because it's already 40, but yeah. I think that the the plan is... Definitely, I can take a crack at the Elite Four next week. Um, I... Like, with a team full of level 50, uh, which is definitely way higher level than what I had this, you know, at the beginning of this stream. Like, I got, I got dunked on, but it was also because, you know, all my Pokemon are level 4. So, I think, given the ability to start going first uh, against quite a lot of the opponents will help, I'm not going to be able to go first all the time. And that is the unknown, but I can also just dump my rare candies, like, right when I've got everyone level 50. We'll just kind of see where we go from there. Um, but uh, I, I don't expect that to take the whole stream. Like, I feel like we should be able to um, have a go at it. And then uh, we'll see how long it takes to catch Rayquaza. That's it, really. I could get, I could get Gladius. Maybe. It's, it's not easy to predict. And you know I'm just going to burn the Master Ball on Lady Ass anyways. Um, and I would like to give a contest a try. Just one. You don't, only have, you don't have to show a whole trek of going to the ranks in contest. You just have to show doing it. Because that's the only mechanic I haven't really shown. Um, other than that, like, I guess as a retrospective of Pokemon Sapphire, um, like a quick... <laughs> You know, 10 minute review. Uh, Pokemon Sapphire definitely was a meaningful part of my young childhood. Not necessarily because it was the first Pokemon game I played, but it was the first Pokemon game a lot of my friends played. And I got to be the person to introduce Pokemon to them. I would play Pokemon non-stop, I would know so much about Gold and Silver, and I still was a bit reserved at the time. I did like the changes of where they went here, but I also felt there was something, you know, expansive about, um, 
gold and silver that I didn't quite feel in Sapphire. But Sapphire had a story, it had much better graphics and music. Um, although I do, I do still kind of dig the art style of gold and silver. Like, what they're pulling on the Game Boy Color is pretty cool. Um, I definitely feel that, you know, both games are about equal in difficulty. I don't think they're really, you know, they're, they're a bit tricky and, you know, they're relying on the grinding a bit at the end. Um, at least the way I'm playing them. Um, but I also don't think that they're, like, baby easy. Like, when we get to X and Y, it's like X and Y is a bit baby easy by the end of the game. You gotta, you gotta invent some challenges to make X and Y a bit harder for yourself. Do what I do. Train three teams all at the same time. It's kind of pointless, but it's certainly possible. Uh, but yeah, it definitely was like, you know, if, if people were a little, you know, turned off by some of the more simplistic graphics of uh, the older Pokemons, I think this game definitely, you know, it blows the bar in terms of presentation. It's got so much more information. You can see... You know, like, you can see what the moves actually do. That's a plus. You don't have to buy a walkthrough just to, just to see what, you know, what your attacks are. And then on top of that, like, you know, I think there's a lot of mysticism with the, the Reggies, the whole story around, um, you know, these two great Pokemon and the, the historic war. It's like, hey, you know, that's a lot more than Team Rocket wants to take over the world. Again, like... I'm not, not saying that it's necessarily bad, the older stories, but I think there was something so much more that this game offers. And then, yeah, we got all the fancy presentation, you know, like, hey, you know, you can capture stuff in different balls and actually look sort of fancy, rather than... I mean, they, you did have different color balls in the Golden Silver, so maybe I shouldn't credit this game too hard. Um, the contests are a fun mode. Um, the double battles are great fun. Um, as like a, you know, it's a fairly natural way of just like expanding the game. I do wish there were more double battles in this game. It just doesn't seem like there's really enough of them, but... Um, but yeah, ultimately, like, this game is great. This game is, like, if Gold and Silver is Pokemon Red and Blue, but just better, I think this game is like a proper sequel. And on top of that, like, I like the way it's laid out. It's designed fairly well. The water is not that long of the game. I don't know why... You know, IGN, bro. You're playing the, you're playing the 3DS version as well. Like, it's less water. Well, I don't know if there's less water, but it's like, you've got like a map and a very easy way to navigate the water. Um, features that are not available in this game, by the way. So if you're playing the 3DS version, uh, don't be surprised if you are confused why, like, you're able to fly around so freely in that game. It's just, it's a new feature in that game, and it's only in that game. Um, but, yeah, oh no, I'm losing packets. No. Yep. Ah, uh, the internet was doing so well. The internet was doing so well. That's because I talked about Reddit earlier. I should have known better than to talk about Reddit. You know how to raise them properly. Well, okay, I'm back in the chat room. The question is, is the stream back? Maybe. My bitrate says zero. At some point, it doesn't exactly tell me that the stream is restarted as well. It'll tell me I'm, like, sending content again, but sometimes it's just, it's hard dead. Well done! All these people live! I'm sorry people live. You may not catch me- Oh! There was a rip. I see Blob's chat. But is the stream there? No. Yes? No? This is Australian internet. It's it's doing worse and worse over time. Or it could be my networking solution. I'm seeking a better solution. I'm trying to upgrade to... Yep, nope. Yeah, it, it says total frames, 800. We are now at the beginning of a new stream all of a sudden. Hello everybody, welcome to the new stream. Um, yeah, and, uh, I love that it cuts out like that, so... Well, if, if uh, some of my audio was cut out in the Twitch VOD, just look at it on YouTube, because I record it all myself. Oh, but yeah, the worst part is that it doesn't, like... 
it, it doesn't just, like, come back. It's, like, here, and then gone, and then here, and then gone. That makes me think, like, is there, like, maintenance or something? They're constantly, like, figuring out something on the... on the wire? I don't know. It is very irritating that it keeps happening. Oh, well. Let's have a couple more goes at some trainers, and then, uh, yeah, follow the stream, but... Yeah, no, I... I do really enjoy this game. Um, I definitely feel like, you know, this is that point though, where it's like, you know, Diamond and Pearl was my fourth Pokemon game, and I started to feel some of the fatigue at that point. Not enough to turn me off from playing Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, but definitely a bit to kind of make me go, hmm, this franchise is still going. You know, and this that game is great, but it is like you know, once you get how many games can you get into a franchise before you're like, yeah, I want them to you know really spice it up, and then eventually that's like a core set of mechanics, and you're just kind of relying on spicing up the mechanics differently each game, which is why I really like Dragon Quest because I think there is a core set of gameplay mechanics that they don't necessarily. Am I back? Maybe I'm having I'm having frames. I had like 30 seconds of like, stream before, and then it cut out again. That makes me think, like, it's, like, what exactly is the network problem going on? I would love if it's like I come back and it's like, oh look, all my Pokemon are level 50 all of a sudden, like, in one go. Um, but yeah. I don't know, I'd imagine, like, networking is like a tap, or like a pipe, it's like, oh, you know, the pipe wasn't fully connected, it was leaking a bit, and then you just tighten it up, and then it's all good, and it starts working, but it's like, no, it, wait, you have to wait for, like, two minutes, because there's, like, a really slow, like, router somewhere on your chain, and it went down, and it had to reboot, and it takes forever to come back on, and it's not my own, like, I, I didn't lose power, so it's not like... Yeah, my devices stopped being able to communicate with each other. Um, I'd imagine the stream content is... Uh, that is interesting. I think... I think it might be TCP because there is a bit of a retry. There is a, a retry feature, but then, yeah, of course, it's like, well, if you drop, like drop content, uh, I think at some point it's like the server just does it now, like just skip forward or something like that. Like that that's how stream encoding works, I think. I think. If it was a bit more raw, yeah, it totally would be UDP. You definitely use UDP for like live TV. Um, or even, um, I don't know though. I don't know, because a lot of them have enough of a buffer and also sort of care about the consistency of the image that you can't drop a packet. Like, if you drop a packet of a video feed, it's like, you just lost, like, the next, like, 15 seconds. Actually, that probably does happen with live TV. I'm very certain that does happen. But yeah, for Twitch streams, I don't think it, like, bugs out like that, so... I don't... Yeah, I, th I think lots of video streams are just buffered enough. Um, and then just try to send as much information through TCP as possible. Which is fine, TCP is, uh, you know, really cool. Really cool. Wasn't Google trying to invent another, like, protocol on top of, um, like, on top of UDP to try and be, like, TCP but better? And it's, it's called, like, Warp or something. I, I think it's called Warp. Uh... No, it's not called Warp. Warp is the Cloudflare thing. What is... Uh... Quick. Quick. Q-U-I-C. They're trying to push a new protocol to basically be like, it's better than TCP. Um... And, uh, yeah, it supports new TLS standards, HTTP 3... Like, I don't know what's exactly in all these, um... All these uh, 
protocol revisions, I assume it's backwards compatible, so it's something that looks for HTTP2. Oh, sorry, something that supports HTTP3 is like, eh, you know, if it just starts any HTTP2 stuff, that's fine. Um, but yeah, there's some things like they're trying to get rid of, like, Synac and instead just, like, dump content when it needs to. Um, it's a rock slide. Wow. I mean, Rock Slide's a cool attack, but uh, it's, it's one. It's physical. It's 90 accuracy. It's not for me. I'm gonna stick with the Sunny Day on that one. Um, yeah, I haven't looked into Quick that much, so I can't tell you if it's uh, better or worse. But you know what is worse? The fact that it is uh, basically 11:30. So. Uh, we'll call that a stream. That was three hours of uh, going around, grinding a fair bit, but just as a status update, um, yeah, it seems that I- okay, so I've got two Pokemon that are bang on level 50. Um, in fact, actually, I'm pretty sure Armaldo is like, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Armaldo is like almost 51 because I accidentally left the experience share on him a fair bit. Uh, Swampert is getting fairly close. He's getting fairly close, he's at 48 and a bit. Cast form's already at 43, so he's not, like, too far away. Uh, Ninjask. Ninjask is Ninjask, yeah, sure. Um, and Mac Mac Cargo again, you know, just hit 48. So, I don't think it should take longer than, like, an hour and a little bit to get to level 50. Then we spam some rare candies, and you have an exam that day. Good luck, my man. Good luck on that one. We have some rare candies. I'll take I'll take an attempt at the league, and then depending on how much extra room, you know what? I should do a bonus stream next week, anyways. If I beat the league and I really don't have enough time to stream for the rest of the week, I'll do a bonus stream later in the week. How about that? That'll be good. Uh, until then, I would like to thank you so very very much for watching. Uh, so yeah, if any of you stuck around or the stream cut out or all that stuff, uh, you feel free to you know follow on Twitch to hear me whenever I don't know uh, or subscribe on YouTube and yeah there'll be bits cut out but it'll be in the YouTube VOD because I just record locally it doesn't matter that the internet dies you know it's all good um, so yeah uh, yeah and uh, and yeah if you have any other Pokemon adventures that you've played or been through you know let me know in comments or let me know anything if you like stuff you don't like stuff just let me know I gotta look at that person's Twitter eventually, but I'm also gonna go to bed, so I'm gonna remind myself when I wake up on that one. We'll see how it goes. Have I mentioned, uh, Seagate still haven't, you know, sent a courier to pick up my hard drive? They told me they were gonna do it back in mid-May. Dang it, Seagate, so. Alright, take care everyone. Don't stay up too late, eat your greens. You know the drill. See ya!